<laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> oh my god, that... That noise. <laughs> uh, oh my god, it was the mic cable that somehow just... <laughs> managed to just like press this thing down. I don't actually need to be inside of there. Interesting. Oh god. <clears throat> Anyways, hello. How are you doing? I was like considering making my uh a good job on getting stuck in YouTube. You're here now, though, so... At the very least. <laughs> so, what was I thinking about? Oh, I forgot. <laughs> Anyways. Let's just get right into it. <laughs> Why did Phoenix Wright become a hobo? Because depression. You know, you mean you don't become a hobo when you're depressed? Like... Ah, okay, let's just continue. I was thinking about something that I forgot what it was, so it's probably not that important. Hopefully I can finish this today, and if I do... Uh, I'm gonna take tomorrow off because I need to take more days off and just like do something else that's not streaming because I literally just wake up to stream nowadays and that's not good. Anyways, <clears throat> let's get into it. Having a yokai testify in court is unprecedented to say the least. I thought it was a glitch or something. I was like, oh no, shit, what happened now? But no, it was just part of her animation. I am Tenma Taro, the yokai you seek. How could such a straight-laced man like Mr. Tenma suddenly become a demon? Yeah, it's strange. Even worse, Prosecutor Blackwell is playing along. Uh, I can't even think straight anymore. I need to go out for a run. See you in a bit. Wait, what about the investigation? Back? <gasps> whoa, whoa, Tracy, welcome back. Oh, you're in your stage outfit. Back from work? Yep, I really nailed this new magic trick I've been working on. I also heard about these tricks that were, those tricks that were conjured up in court earlier today. You know, the demon out of nowhere trick and Polly's tightrope style defense? Tightrope style defense trick, that's it. I was seriously considering a dis disappearing act of my own after all that craziness. Anyway, our next trick is to find a suspect other than the mayor. I know the killer must have used the air duct in, in their escape. And whoever did that was the Ten Mataro that Mr. Filch and Jinxie saw. Right, maybe there's some evidence in the air duct. The real fight starts right now! Hey, before you go, let me make the evidence you no longer need disappear! Three, two, one! Ta da! Thanks, Trissy! <laughs> Unnecessary evidence has disappeared into Trissy's magic panties. <laughs> Why do they have to be panties? <laughs> wonder where all that stuff goes. <laughs> okay, let's get over to the scene of the crime. Vamanos, Apollo. Vamanos. Oh, we don't have a to-do list right now. Okay. Detective Fulbright, mind if we search the air duct? 
Well, since you really are on the side of justice, I suppose I can let you. Plus, my own sense of justice has been called into doubt, so... David Ten what What does David Tennant have to do with this? <laughs> I wonder if it's been like this ever since the trial. Well, his sense of justice has been beaten to a pulp. It'll probably take a while for him to recover. I sort of feel bad for him. But we have work to do. Let's go get the evidence we need! The air duct is the key. We know that Tenma Taro impersonator used it to make an escape. Oh my god, no. <laughs> of course he was. After murdering the alderman, the killer left the fox chamber through the hallway door. And after locking the door from the outside, the killer entered the air duct in the hallway. Finally, the killer dropped the key into the fox chamber through the air vent here. Then went back through the duct and fled the manor. That's how the illusion of no one entering or leaving the locked room was created. If the killer passed through the air duct, maybe we'll find some evidence there. Yeah, maybe some black feathers or something like that. Well, here's our vent. It's awfully high up. Don't worry, I brought a stepladder. Happy hunting! How nice of her to volunteer me for the job. Whoa, it's pitch black in here. Well, here goes nothing. <laughs> Vance is just fucking dying. There's a thick layer of dust in here! Oh my god, really? I don't... get it. Find anything? Yikes, Apollo, what happened? You're covered in dust! Yeah... dust. Lots of dust. So what do you find? You know how dust collects on something when nobody uses it for a long time? Yeah, like Mr. Wright's desk back at the office. Oof. <laughs> right. You think it'd be, be possible to crawl over that sort of dust without leaving a trail? I seriously doubt it. Wait, you're not suggesting... No one's gone through that duct lately? Kind of looks that way. And if it's true, Mayor Tenma is going to be fingered as the killer- Can you stop? I swear he does this on purpose. But, but... We don't turn things around quickly. In justice we trust! Ah! Ha ah, ah, ha ah. ha! Sorry, Mr. Justice, but it seems your justice was not the most just after all. It is my sense of justice that has prevailed. <sighs> Detective Fulbright sure seems, seems chipper all of a sudden. <sighs> I'm back to my old devastated self. Oh, come on. Where is that never say die spirit? Bring it on, Mr. Lawyer Man. Bring it on. Let me suffer in peace. <laughs> Apollo is the biggest mood, honestly. Ha <laughs> ha Justice prevails once more. It's not over yet. And besides, kicking someone when they're down is what bad guys do. No. <laughs> Are you calling me a, a, a bad guy? Me? Bobby Fulbright, champion of justice! Then how about some information on the investigation? We need some help here. Information about the investigation? Alright, then I won't have you calling me a bad guy ever again, understood? We did it, Apollo. Yeah, but how long can we keep this up? I can't believe Prosecutor Blackwell would stoop that low. I mean, to pinning the blame on the yokai. He really wants a conviction at all costs. She do 
give a yokai a run for its money when she's mad. Yes, well, I have him writing a self-reflective essay as we speak. I doubt that'll teach him anything. Yeah, he'll probably just write a... Dotard. Write Dotard a thousand times, that's what he said. The whole yokai business is most likely a ploy to win a conviction. Truth is, Prosecutor Blackwell believes Jinxie Tenma planted that yokai stuff. Planted it in an effort to protect her father, the real killer. Yeah, right! I'd like to see him prove it! Whoa, calm down! He doesn't have any direct evidence, but we did find this. It was at the base of the cliff, just outside QB Manor. Wait. Isn't the staff Ten Matata was supposedly carrying, is it? The one and only. Miss Tenma no doubt tossed it over the cliff when she was done. No way! Well, what about Prince? Nope, no Prince, but if she was wearing a costume, there wouldn't be any anyway. Well, Prince or no Prince, it's not going to work in our favor. Sounds like the staff might have belonged to the mansion. If that's the case... Then where in the mansion did Tenma Taro get it from? Did Prosecutor Blackwell figure out that the victim was the Amazing Ninetales? He did indeed! He's a sharp one, alright. He figured it out while investigating the municipal merger and the victim's past. The Amazing Ninetales sparked the yokai craze and worked against the merger. Mayor Damien Tenma is the corrupt politician who murdered the, that great hero. The Amazing Ninetales' fans are so angry, they even tried to storm the detention center. I don't blame them. I mean, their favorite masked wrestling hero was murdered. He must have been shocked when they found out what happened. Speaking of which, isn't Jinxie also a fan of the Amazing Ninetales? A wrestler's mask is more precious than his own life. He never unmasked himself in front of others. But there are matches where wrestlers battle for the right to remove each other's masks. Remember when Apollo was like, they, they get each other naked? <laughs> huh? <laughs> Have your mar ma mask torn off. It's the worst humiliation a wrestler could suffer. Why their masks are more important to them than life itself. He spoke with a passion that only a fan could appreciate. We ought to become fans ourselves and go protest in front of the prison. What? No! Did you forget that Mayor Tenma is not only Jinxie's father but our client? Oh yeah. But be careful now. You're defending the most hated mayor in history. I just hope you don't find yourself on the wrong end of a figure figure four leg lock. I should wear a mask to hide my identity. Are there any other new developments we should know? Hmm, now that you mention it. Our suspect is suffering partial memory, memory loss, but he did manage to remember something. He did? What did he say? He said he didn't want to speak with us. His exact words were, I am under no obligation to speak with you mortals. And other things of that nature. I wonder what Mayor Tenma remembered. Too bad you can't go ask him now. His pr prosecutor Blackwell is busy questioning him. I know. Why don't you wait out at the playground with the rest of the kids? Ha <laughs> ha. What now, Apollo? How about regrouping back at the agency? Good idea. We might get some words of wisdom out of Mr. Wright while we're there. Rethink investigation strategy. Sweet. Maybe I'll go read over some past cases. And then I'll go do some research on exorcisms. Hey, what's with you guys? You seem bummed out. 
How should I put this? It's like we're at the edge of a cliff and the only way is down. In other words, business as usual, right? Yeah, I suppose so. Except this time, it's like we're bound and gagged too. If we get blindfolded with our ears plugged up. Oh, and monsters at every turn, huh? Sounds rough. Hey, Apollo. Oh, and Athena's here too. Is it right? How goes the investigation, Apollo? Athena? I think it's safe to say that things have gotten hairier than before. Really? What happened? Why do I look at his face and I just see a seagull? <laughs> Something just funny with his face now. I can't really place it. I was watching the two of you this morning from the gallery. That was one tough day in court, to say the least. I know, I've never had to defend a yokai before. The business about the locked room was another major hurdle. Yeah, and on top of that, Jinxie was accused of being an accomplice. But at least you figured out how someone could have escaped the Forbidden Chamber. Yeah, well, we just found out that our reasoning might be a tad... flawed. Oh, really? Well, that's... bad news. How are we going to get out of this one? The worst of times are when a lawyer... when lawyers have to force their biggest smiles. Worse? A smile? Yeah, my mentor taught me that back when I was still learning the trade. Listen. Don't... <laughs> yeah. Like I said, the, an the animations are a bit stiff. Especially like they're in, in the face. What not. But it's cool. It'd be like that, I guess. Not him talking about Mia, though. She also taught me to return to the basics whenever I got stuck. Return to the basics? That's right. Always believe in your client, no matter what happens. That is the lawyer's greatest and most trusted weapon. The basics. Always believe in your client, huh? So, Mr. Wright, how long have you known Athena? I met her during a trip to Europe. Why would you go to Europe? Huh? You were in Europe? Why haven't I heard about this before? Yeah, I went there a few times to study the various legal systems over there. Oh, okay. Uh, wait a minute. I thought you worked as a pianist after you quit practicing law. I did, but an old friend of mine needed help with some legal work from time to time, so... An old friend of yours, you say? Okay. Oh, I guess you never... I guess you were never very far from the courtroom then. It was like fate brought us together. It's thanks to Mr. Wright that I became a lawyer at all. Ha ha ha. I knew she was lawyer material from the moment I met her. And I have high hopes for her ability to analyze people's emotions. Aww, it's nothing special. Hmm underestimated that analytical psychology of hers. It's just, I thought that if my special ability could help defend innocent people, then I had to do everything in my power to bring it to the courtroom. That's when I really started hitting the books hard. I'm still amazed she actually became a lawyer. And at the tender age of 18, no less. Wow, that's almost superhuman. Personal, like she's trying to help somebody she knows. Alright, I'm totally pumped up after talking to you, Mr. Wright. It's like you said, the worst of times are when lawyers have to force their biggest smiles. And don't forget to return to the basics whenever you get stuck. Believing in my client, right. Um, Mr. Wright? Yes? I'm... I'm gonna go visit our client again. I think that's a good idea. Alright, time to 
to see what's new down at the, the, at the detention center. Mayor Tenma, we wanted to talk to you about something. Kasha! So my minions have returned. Apollo! He still thinks he's a yokai. I wonder if we'll ever be able to talk to Mayor Tenma again. Silence, peddler of the legal trade. Free me from these imprisoning walls with great haste. Wow, he's sounding more and more like a real demon with every sentence. I'm starting to wonder if... We should even be helping him win his freedom. Still, we can't let Mayor Tenma stay possessed, you know what I mean? If you can clear me of these charges, I shall help in whatever manner I may. Now ask of me what you will. I suppose it's worth a shot. Doing okay? Shakespeare's crying in the corner? Where are those feathers and tracks at the scene of the crime really you're doing? Indeed, the remnants of Tenmataru, king of the underworld, they be. The day when I once again dominate the mortal world is at hand. Prosecution claims the feathers and tracks were planted by Jinxie. What's this? I must breach these walls and go defend my little Jinxie at once. Huh? Mayor Tenma? Is that you? Oh, uh, well now. Damon appears to still reside within this body. <laughs> Smooth. Smooth. Well, I should have expected as much from a descendant of mine. Be silent now, Damien. I guess a little thing like demonic possession won't stop a father's love for his daughter. You didn't kill Alderman Cubit, did you? I have killed no one. The, rem the remnants of my presence have been misconstrued. The murderer is not I. For if I had slain that mortal, raging hellfire could have would have consumed him. Can I? Leaving naught but ash. Yikes! So. So, you're saying there must have been somebody else there? When I think of it, the mayor had mentioned that he'd been clubbed with this statue. I better ask about this too. Detective Fulbright mentioned that you might have something new to tell me. Indeed I have. I regurgitated this key, but a, but a short while ago. Regurgitated? Behold, the key to the forbidden chamber. Whoa! Regurgitation one of your demonic powers too? Huh! Do not waste my powers on such parlor- I do not waste my powers on such parlor tricks. Take the key from the killer, did- Did Damien, whereupon he swallowed it. Okay, Yoda. He sought to bar the killer entry to the forbidden chamber. So he wanted to keep it shut tight. No fingerprints shall you find upon that key. How do you know that? Wait. Is that another one of your demonic powers then? Foolish mortal. You would have me, Tenmataro, act as some asinine alchemist. I but asked the jailer and my will was done. Quite eagerly, I must add. <laughs> Always an honor to serve, your malevolence. Yes, I'm not the only one he's scares the living daylights out of. Um, can we ask you how you use this key? We couldn't find a keyhole anywhere in or around the door. Curse that infernal door. But if I had known its manner of opening long, long ago, would I have made my return? He has a point there. Maybe Jinxie knows something about how the whole thing works.
What might I ask? Is that? The statue was found at the scene. Someone hit Mayor Tenma over the head with it. I have been wrapped in a large cloth before the Alderman's murder. Let me see whether Damien knows about such a thing. Hmm, yes. Something wrapped in such a cloth, does he recall? A secret gift from Alderman Cube, it would seem. He, however, had not a chance to see it till now, for the cloth did conceal it. Maybe the cloth fell off or was removed after the mirror was struck. Hmm, of that Damien does not know. A secret gift? Interesting. Maybe Jinxie knows something about it. I should question him about the blackmail letter too. Let's see what he says when I show it to him. Like this. This is that accursed blackmail letter that was sent to Damien. Apparently, somebody slipped it into the alderman's pocket. We believe someone, probably the killer, stole it from Mayor Tenma's briefcase. You wouldn't happen to know anything about that, would you? <laughs> you have questions, do you? Very well. Ask away, mortal. Oh, you just take the ride over there. Nice. Who placed this in the alderman's pocket? Hmm. Very few were, were they who knew the letter was in Damien's briefcase. So whoever knew about the blackmail letter being in the mayor's briefcase is a potential suspect in its theft and placement in the alderman's pocket. Oh, could it have been his doing? Mr. Mayor, uh, I mean Mr. Taro, did you just remember something? Indeed I did. There was but one other who knew of that letter, Damien's aide, Laurent Labelle. Full knowledge of that briefcase's contents did that aide possess. And he may be the blackmailer and the murderer we're looking for. That is preposterous. He's the most trusted advisor. He would never betray Damien. It seems like Mayor Tenma is a bit too trusting of those around him. Still, this is huge! Now we know who might have slipped that blackmail letter in the alderman's pocket. Look out for around the bell. Here comes justice! Let's go find Mr. LaBelle and rake him over the coals. Thanks for the help. You've just given us a major lead. Hmm. There's something that still bothers me. Still a discount joker. For real, though. Mr. LaBelle is the killer. What could have motivated him to open the Forbidden Chamber? We should probably search for clues. Only one problem. How do you open a locked door that doesn't have a keyhole? Let's go talk to Jinxie. Maybe she can help. Hey, isn't that... Uh, you dare imprison me. Jinxie! She's acting really strange. That loathsome, oh good nine-tailed fox. You shall know the terror that is mine and despair. Uh, uh, you shall pay. Oh, you shall pay dearly. All of you. Jinxie, are you alright? <laughs> oh, is that you, Mr. Demon Lawyer? Morning, Jinxie. Morning? Isn't it already past noon? What am I doing here? Unless I remember I laid down to take a nap at the manor. Oh no! I must. It must have been the. the Kuragashi. Makura Gaishi. Makura Gaishi? Wait, was Makura or Makura? Makura. Ah, Makura. That's pillow. Ever wake after a restless night's sleep to find your pillow in an unusual place? 
heard that you've been sleeping on the floor or in the hallway? Well, it's that yokai's fault. The Makura Gaeshi preys on people while they're asleep. It sounds like you just need to be tucked in really tight, or maybe a snug, snug sleeping bag. I mean, maybe. Mm. Jinxie, how come you don't have any charms on your forehead? I don't... Oh, they must have fallen off. Without them, evil things can creep into me. I'd say we had a more than adequate demonstration of that just now. Better reapply them. Jinxie, there's something we wanted to ask you. There was something I wanted to tell you, too. I, I remembered something else. Okay, but that, that's kind of amazing, though. Like, if you, like, do it in, like, um... An ironic kind of way. Like, I believe Rumi Official did for a while. He had this, like, Devil's Advocate series. Where he played Devil's Advocate for, like, the stupidest things. You did? When was it? Jinxie, can you tell us what you remember? Well... After the trial, I remembered lots of stuff. But there was one thing I thought was really weird. I am almost afraid to ask, but here goes. Really? What? Um... It's about the yokai feathers and tracks. They weren't there when I first opened the door. Wait... What? Are you sure? Uh-huh. My memory's crystal clear now. So you're saying they were left at the crime scene after you found it? This could spell major trouble, Apollo. Why? Because Jinxie is already accused of leaving the feathers and tracks at the scene. If they weren't there when she discovered the crime scene, it will totally fuel the claim that she fabricated the evidence later on. <laughs> Jinxie's fuzzy memory of the whole incident is really working against us. The prosecution will probably say she doesn't remember planting that evidence. Good luck rebutting that. Oh man, this is not good. I sure hope she didn't plant the evidence while she was sleepwalking or something. Jinxie, you wouldn't happen to know how to open the forbidden chamber, would you? The door doesn't have a doesn't even have a keyhole. Well, it's supposed to have a secret mechanism. They say you have to figure it out before the keyhole will appear. A secret mechanism? Really? Uh-huh. It's hidden in the fox chamber. But only Alderman QB knew what it was and how it worked. The Alderman of Ninetales Vale sure loved his secrets. Apollo, let's go see if we can find that secret mechanism. Whoa, slow down. There's something else I need to ask about. Jinxie, is there only one key to the Forbidden Chamber? Uh-huh. Even the Manor's Master Key won't open it. Because it's a very special room that must never be opened. Yes, that means nobody entered the Forbidden Chamber after the murder. After all, we know Mayor Tenma took the key from the killer and swallowed it, so... So the Mayor's efforts to keep the killer out of the Forbidden Chamber were not in vain.
just needs backup sometimes too. So I don't mind you asking for help, but you should start by thinking things over yourself. After all, the road to justice starts with your own first step. Ha ha ha. If you don't have any information to offer, you could just say so. Okay, sweet. I see. <laughs> oh, I need to go back to statue. It's a token of goodwill. I think it was meant to be for Ninetales Vale and Tenma Town. A token of goodwill? But the two yokai are fighting. Fighting? Oh, I see what you mean. The cup portion is missing. The statue. Originally depicted the two yokai holding up a cup in celebration. But it sure doesn't look that way now, does it? It broke when it was used to hit Mayor Tenma on the head. I can't explain it. I guess the only two people who knew that it, what it really looked like were the Alderman and I. So you only took minus nine psychic damage, I guess. <laughs> so not quite there. <laughs> Symbol of goodwill will forever be will be forever etched in my mind. Okay. Sweet. So, is there anything else we should know about Jinxie? Oh, that's about it. Huh? My bracelet. It's reacting. Jinxie wouldn't happen to be. In justice, we trust. Yikes. Oh. Detective Fulbright, what are you doing here? I have business with this young lady, if you must know. Prosecutor Blackwell has asked me to question her. Question me? Sorry, not interested. Are you here to ask about the whole yokai affair? That's right. Specifically, we want to ask. Ah, oh, but I can't tell you that now, can I? <laughs> Come on, please! We're partners in justice, right? No, no! Prosecutor Blackwell specifically told me my questions were of the utmost justice. I will not fall for your lies. In justice we trust. Okay, then you trust in me. I'm Justice. Hello, nice to meet you. My name is Apollo Justice. <laughs> Twisted Samurai sure has him on a short leash. So you're not a ghost? Maybe some sort of urban troll then? Now come along, Miss Tenma, to the station with you. He took her away. I missed my chance to see what she was lying about. Well, at least he found out there's a secret mechanism for opening the chamber. Let's go check it out! Just hope they let us in now. You know, I don't like this. <laughs> really? You had to go with blue? Out of all the fucking colors, you went with blue? Motherfucker. Oh, what an absolutely fabulous scent! I'm so glad I had these carnations imported from England. Nothing but the finest will do. 
Perhaps I should place one aside for our dearly departed alderman. Oh, it's Mr. LaBelle. Apollo, let's ask him about you know what. Oh yeah, before we search the fox chamber, we should ask about the blackmail the blackmail letter. Why, if it isn't the mayor's little lawyers, what do you want with me? <laughs> I like that the buttons on his coat or whatever are like little bows. <laughs> Oh, um, there is something we wanted to ask. Where is that ringing coming from? You'll have to excuse me. Hello, LaBelle here. Uh, may I just point out that this is set in like 20 27. <laughs> Those things on his shoulders are cell phones? Yes, about that. You must forgive me. Well, yeah, but the flip phones. Flip phones, though, they went out, went out of fashion, like, years ago. They tried to bring them back, I guess, but, like... Not like this. <laughs> this whole matter with Mayor Tedma has been a complete nightmare. You buy clothes like that. <laughs> it's for the aesthetic. Surprised? This is my own special design. It's the ultimate in functional beauty. Functional beauty. <laughs> you in that thick? You sure about that? Looks a bit unwieldy to me. Ah. <laughs> you simply don't have an eye for beauty. If having an eye for beauty means looking like this guy, I'd rather be blind. <laughs> Apollo! What? <laughs> Drag him! So, what do you want with me? Jinxie and Mr. Filch said they saw Ted Mataro. And what about you, Mr. LaBelle? If you were in the foyer, why didn't you just- Yeah! <laughs> Very well, I admit it. That's right, I flew around the bell, saw the demon Ted Mataro. Hmm, he did see something. And why did you lie about not seeing him? I was simply trying to protect dear little Jinxie. Protect Jinxie? What do you mean? Why, don't tell me you haven't heard of that strange little habit of hers. Which one are we talking about? The one where she wanders around making mischief without knowing what she is doing. Rumor has it she is possessed by Tenmataro. That one's new to me. <laughs> well, there you have it. Anytime you hear about a Ted Motaro sighting, little Jinxie should be your prime suspect. Tell us more about that rumor. So, what was that rumor about Jinxie? They say she's possessed. Not all the time, of course. It hits suddenly. Then she starts wandering around doing strange things. Is that so? No, come to think of it. Though some no good nine tailed fox, he shall know the terror that is mine in despair. That certainly would explain how she was acting earlier. Once she even put on a ten matado costume and wandered around the woods at night. She did? Nah.
What? What is happening in this case? Honestly, I am. <laughs> oh, I wish I'd never asked. Does she remember anything while she's possessed? Unfortunately, no. She doesn't seem to remember a thing during these episodes. I don't know if that was like really common in in, ja in Japan. I don't know what they did. Probably just torture, to be honest. <laughs> Listen, I don't know. When I've played this before, I don't remember anything. <laughs> Memory loss during possession. Hmm. Come to think of it, her memory of the murder murder scene was quite fuzzy. I suppose that suppose that too was caused by her possession. Ah, and maybe. <laughs> so you do understand that whole yokai business was entirely of her own making. Now wait a minute. No, that yokai evidence wasn't there until after she discovered the crime scene. Did she leave those black feathers and strange tracks there herself? Apollo! Let's ask me your tenma about Jinxie's episodes the next time we talk to him. What is that? It's the blackmail letter, but it wasn't sent to Alderman QB. It wasn't to Mayor Tenma. And? Your point being? Someone took the letter from the mayor's briefcase. Okay, I'm gonna do that instead. And then placed it in the alderman's pocket after he was murdered. It's just I peek my mic. And when I peek my mic, it just won't pick up the sound. <laughs> so it's kind of funny. Oh, you don't say. You wouldn't happen to be the one who made the switch, would you? After all, you were the only one who knew that the blackmail letter was in the briefcase. So naturally, you. Ugh. <laughs> Perhaps that shot of cologne will make those scales fall from your eyes. <laughs> Was that better? Or did my mic just like not pick up those words at all? Or my eyes fall from their sockets. Is it possible that you would like to frame me as a potential suspect? Your mic died so high, yeah, I figured it would. What would make you raise, raise such out, an outrageous allegation in the first place? Oh, oh, uh, well. <laughs> My only crime is being born as beautiful as you see here. In other words, you have nothing. Now, let me show you what to do with this garbage. Ah, you can't destroy evidence like that. What do you mean I can't? I just did. <laughs> Feel a little lighter now? I just want a one-way trip to the top of my most annoying people ever list, buddy. Are we done with your silly questions now? I'm a very busy man, you know. <sighs> I guess that's it for now. Hello, LaBelle speaking. Really? You wish to carry my new product at your store? Oh, but I'm afraid it's my own private brand. It's not available to the public. What? Then I shouldn't advertise it on TV? But I don't understand. As the embodiment of beauty, it is my duty to announce my good looks to the world. Sorry, I'm just thinking Jeffree Star. <laughs> Stop the buzz. I'm getting off. <laughs> Everyone wants my exclusive Je suis la Belle brand products. It's a crown jewel of my collection, born of my long, relentless pursuit of beauty. But now that it's become so popular, it's been an absolute nightmare. You don't say. Well, they can't have it. It's just for me. It's not meant for you peasants. Peasants? This is my latest product. I'm calling it Colomi La Belle. A dazzling hair color that you can wash out with just water. That means you can't sweat. I have seven colors in all. You can find out more in my commercials and magazine ads. Yet, it's not available to the public. Great sales strategy there, genius. 
Come to think of it, Mr. LaBelle. Your hair color's changed since the last time we met. <laughs> the little lady has quite the discerning eye. Oh, he's for sure a clown. <laughs> Here's a little sample. Consider it as a gift for one who truly appreciates beauty. Oh, uh, Apollo, what should I do? Better take it before you get a face full of cologne. Good point. Wow, thanks, Mr. Lavelle. Okay, let's head over to the Fox Chamber. We've still gotta find the secret mechanism for opening the Forbidden Chamber. Okay. Bye. Okay, let's find that secret mechanism for opening the Forbidden Chamber. Oh, this is so exciting! I can't wait to see how it works! But do you really think the killer and enter the Forbidden Chamber? We'll just have to open it to find out. We should also see if there was anywhere the killer could have hidden this room. Okay, let's get started! A poop? <laughs> Athena, please. I do not understand you. I mean, I guess it's Spanish, but like... Apurate. Okay, sure. Apurate, Apollo. Apurate. Still no keyhole, huh? Yeah, and the door won't budge, just like those spiky banks of yours. Well, well, it takes you some water, but I don't think that would work on the door. Oh, I know! I'll break it down with a body slam! <laughs> I seriously doubt you could do that. How do you know if I haven't even tried? No, wait, don't! <laughs> as much as you hate boosting, Athena, I think the door would win this match. Maybe the killer hid under this table. What a, that would be a terrible hiding place. The alderman's body would have been right above. Hmm, maybe you're right. Guess the underside is a bit... Wait, there's something under the table. Let's check it out. Hey, look. There's something down here. It looks like a piece of something. Only question is, a piece of what? Hmm... Why no? It might be a piece of the statue. Remember what Jinxie said? The statue originally depicted two yokai holding up a cup. It was a symbol of goodwill. So this piece broke off and rolled under the table. That again is on top of the blood. Interesting. There's a carving of the nine-tailed fox over the door. And statues of him on either side. The way those two statues are glaring, it's like they're guarding the door from us. When you think of it, there are two foxes on the folding screen as well. Can't be a coincidence, can it? Hey! This statue moves! You get carried away now, I mean, who knows? It might trigger a trap. <laughs> I can handle it. If a spirit comes shooting my way, I'll snatch it out of the air. 
After all, I have the reflexes of a regular karate kid. I guess if you can catch something that fast out of midair, you can accomplish anything. Still. There might be something to the fact that these fox statues rotate. Maybe there's something around here that shows the position they should be in. Foxes standing back to back are depicted on this elegant folding screen. But this has something to do with the keyhole. Hmm, wait a minute. Two foxes. There are two fox statues in front of the forbidden chamber as well. Maybe the keyhole will appear if we do something to this folding screen. Okay, but what happened? I don't see anything unusual about it. Well, it does have two foxes on it, and there are two fox statues in front of the door. And maybe there's a clue somewhere in this room. Just turn the whole place upside down. Ah. Uh, okay. That makes sense. She's as excited as a kid in a candy store. Well. I can't think of anywhere else to look. You find anything, Apollo? I'll never find the keyhole to the forbidden chamber at this rate. There's something about that folding screen. You know how those fox statues in front of the forbidden chamber move? That screen might be a clue as to how we're supposed to position them or something. Hey, I bet you're right. Let's go over that screen with a fine tooth comb. Closer inspection. I think there's more to this screen than meets the eye. Let's check every last inch of it. Tap a slide on the bottom screen to rotate the folding screen. You can also tap on something of interest to inspect it further. You can also zoom in and out to get a better look. Okay, well, let's check every last inch of it. of a key. Hmm. That shape looks awfully familiar. Oh, I know! It's shaped like the Forbidden Chamber's key. Hmm. We're definitely getting warmer. Okay, let's take an even, cl even closer look. What's this? Looks like a keyhole or something. I think it could be the keyhole to the Forbidden Chamber? Wait. What about that key drawn on the end of the screen? Think the two are related? A key and a keyhole. Oh, I just got an idea. If we fold the screen up just right, the key and keyhole should over overlap. Hey, I think you're right. Let's give it a try. Look, a door. Yeah, and it's open too. Two foxes are now facing each other, so... What if we made those fox stasis... St stasis statues face each other? Apollo! Let's go check out the two statues! Okay, help me move the two statues so they face each other. Just like on the screen. Look! A lock appeared! Now we can use that key! Okay, here goes nothing. It worked! And you see why this chamber is so forbidden. What secrets could it hold, I wonder? Doors need some serious oil. <laughs> that was like nails on a chalkboard. All right, forgot about those super good ears of yours. Look, 
More feathers. <laughs> My mic just died, I bet. What the heck is that? Is that a Tenmotaro statue? There's something odd about it. Uh -huh. All I know is I don't like it, but I can't explain why. Are you okay, Athena? You look kind of pale. You're not scared, are you? What? Of this thing? Don't make me laugh. <laughs> really? Hey, look. What? What is it? Over there on the left, there's a bunch of staffs that on that rack. They kind of look like the staff we saw earlier. You mean the one Jinxie said she saw Tenmatado carrying? Yeah, I bet our Tenmatara impersonator really did come in here at some point. Well, what are we searching for? What are we waiting for? Let's search the place. What's this? Whatever it is, the packaging is really gaudy. And the fact that there is no dust on it means it hasn't been here very long. Oh, it's hand cream! Let's see what brand it is. Je suis le bel? Le bel? What the? Then, wouldn't that mean Mr. Le bel was here? I guess so, but why? Well, whoever was dressed up like Tenmotaro must have taken a staff from here in the Forbidden Chamber. That same person probably dropped his hand cream, this hand cream at the same time. At that time. In other words, the Tenmatado impersonator we're looking for is none other, none other than... Laurent Labelle. This might be a big break for us in court tomorrow. And all we have to do is get the truth out of Mayor Tenma. Oh, there's one big statue. It must be something like 15 feet tall. And look, this Tenmatado has a staff. But the Tenmatado in the scroll didn't have one. Hmm, I wonder why. I feel like this could be a significant... Be significant, but why? Let's take a closer look. There's a go around this table here. Apollo, are you sure that's a good idea? Hey, it looks like there's some sort of compartment in the base of the statue. Don't open it! Who knows what might be in there? It's just a big empty compartment. From all the dust and cobwebs, I'd say it hasn't been opened in a really long time. That's enough, Apollo. Let's shut it and- Wait, there is something in here. Looks like some sort of figure. But it's so dusty. I can't tell, it's tell what it's supposed to be. I wonder what it's doing here. What the hell is that? <laughs> Looks like a mix between a pig and a chihuahua. <laughs> ah, okay. Uh, examine the scroll. Okay. Looks like an old scroll. There's something drawn on it. Unless I'm mistaken, it looks like an old guy. Some sort of monk, maybe? A monk? What are you talking about? You know, people that take walks in the mountains as a form of spiritual training. Wouldn't that just be a hiker? The guy in this picture doesn't look like he's doing this for fun, Athena. Hmm. Oh, look! There's some yellow thing strapped his back. Whoa! It's turning into Tenmatado! What's this scroll getting at? Is this how Tenmatado was born? Well, whatever it is, it's definitely creepy.
there's a bunch of staves here. And it looks like one's missing. The Ten Matado Jinxie saw must have taken it. I'd have to agree. These look like the one Detective Fulbright showed us. Why do you think there are so many here? Maybe they're spares. Ten Matado might be, you know, absent-minded or something. But the fact that he has spare staves handy, well... It shows that he's aware of its faults and is trying to deal with them. Or at least that's my take on it. I, I forgot you're, you're a psychology major. <laughs> I forgot about that. Maybe this will remind her to deal with her own faults. I won't hold my breath. Well, look, there's an air vent here too. I guess even forbidden chambers need proper ventilation. Hmm. I don't think anyone could reach this one either. Yeah, and there's nothing to stand on around here. I wonder where this vent leads. Well, the Fox Chamber's vent didn't branch this way, so... Maybe it doesn't have anything to do with this case after all. Guess that about wraps it up. What now? We should probably talk to some of the witnesses again. You mean like Mr. Filch? And Jinxie? Yeah, I really want to ask Mr. Filch about the village superstitions and Tenmataro. so good I don't have to like drop by the fox chamber and then go to the foyer I can just go directly to the foyer yes <laughs> sorry this is so helpful honestly So we have to talk to Filch, and then we also have to figure out about Jinxie, and talk to Jinxie. This is so good, honestly. It's the curse! The curse! The curse of Ted Mataro! Ah! You outsiders are ignoring them superstitions that are pearl! Mind your own business, will ya? Ah! Ouch! What's all this about a curse? Then Matado's gonna curse us all, lest ya stop sticking your nose where it don't belong. Stop the investigation. Listen to what them superstitions say. Hey, um, how about obeying the law before you go obeying the superstitions? Huh? Hey, what are you doing with Bridget around your neck? He's mine! You know better than to go around stealing people's stuff like that. The single's my bracelet. Sorry, sorry. I promise I won't do it again. Didn't you say that last time? He almost kidnapped my sweet little widget. Big jerk! I'm sorry! Uh, I guess you can't teach an old raccoon dog new tricks. As long as we have him here, I guess we should ask him about what happened. believe you did that! It's one thing to steal a pair of shoes, but to steal widgets! <laughs> mercy! Mercy! I can't seem to control myself. It's that thieving blood running in my veins. Just say you're a klepto and get over it later. <laughs> like, really? Seriously? Like... Thieving blood? What's that supposed to mean? <laughs> Glad you asked! My infamous bandit, Azuki Kozo. It was my grandpappy. Take a gander at this. What exactly am I looking at? It looks like another one of those yokai to me. It's none other, none other than the Azuki Kozo. Robbed from the rich to give to the poor, he did. Robin Hood? I need to leave one of those figures at the scene of the crime. Once more, I'm his grandson because he was my grandpappy. Wow, you don't say. Thieves' honor, it's the honest truth. Ah, the sloshing sound of Asuki beans scraping together, scrapping together in the dead of night. It's the magical sound of dirty money getting washed clean for giving out to the poor. I'm Asuki Koso, washer of money. 
giver out or of wealth reborn. Same. Forget the money. You should be washing yourself of this nasty habit. Wait a second. This figure looks familiar. Yes. It looks just like that old dusty figure we found, at the found in the forbidden chamber. Hey. What are you doing with that there figure? This. We found it in the forbidden chamber. It looks like it had been there practically forever. Hmm. Good me my grandpappy broke into the forbidden chamber way back. That reminds me, he once told me there's treasure in that there chamber. Treasure? <laughs> Tell me about the treasure. What do you know about the treasure in the forbidden chamber? <laughs> Only that it's the greatest get rich quick chance in the universe. Grandpappy told me all about it. Said there's an amazing treasure in there. There's something amazing in there. I didn't see anything like that though. Grandfather didn't, by chance, already steal it, did he? Seeing how there was one of his figures in there, that just might be. Heh <laughs> that's grandpappy for you. Then he washed that treasure up real good before handing it out to the poor. Oh, of course, because he was so righteous. I had fries for dinner today. <laughs> Some of them got kind of burnt, but you know what, it's fine. It's my fault for not turning the oven on properly the first time and leaving them in for too long. And then, or like leaving them in for like the time they're supposed to be, be in there for and then I'm like, oh wait, shit, it says 225 degrees Celsius. Not, not 220, so I have to like turn it up like five more degrees, right? Not 200, sorry. So I have to turn it up like 25 more degrees. And, uh, then I was like, man, no, they can stay in, like, for, like, two more minutes. And then I get back, like, two minutes later, and I'm like, nah, they can't stay two minutes later. Two minutes more, I mean. And then I get back again, and I'm like, oh, shit. Well, <laughs> it'd be like that, I guess. Court, you mentioned seeing Tenmataro near the scene of the crime. Sorry, I didn't come clean right away. You know, I don't blame you for getting distracted over chocolates. Them superstitions got the better of me. The people of Ninetales Vale sure seem like a superstitious bunch. I'm not surprised you wouldn't want to talk about seeing Tenmataro. Darn right! Them superstitions scare me out of my wits, I tell you. That's why I'm gonna do exactly what they say from now on. So you plan on staying here in Ninetales Vale? Yep. I'm gonna keep living here and keep with old ways, just like Grandpappy did. And superstitions are like a rule book to me. Wait, so you're saying you actually believe in those old wives' tales? Ain't you been listening to a word I said? I'm going to do exactly what them superstitions say. Well, I say that's baloney. written right here. Ignoring the superstitions will cost you your soul. There is, however, one way to save it. Your immediate departure from the village. Huh. So according to this, you shouldn't even be here, let alone talking with us. You said you plan on staying right here in Ninetales Vale. And if you really believed in the superstitions, you would have been long gone by now. Uh. I know you've been lying to me. Time to come clean, Mr. Felch. Yikes. You were lying about believing in the superstitions, weren't you? Sorry, but I didn't have no choice. So what was the real reason why you couldn't talk about seeing Tenmataro? It's all the pretty boy's fault. Mr. LaBelle, if you know what I mean. You told me not to say a word about seeing Tenmataro. Hmm. Really now. He said if I did, he'd do to me what them superstitions said would happen. So it was Mr. LaBelle who muzzled you. Why would Mr. LaBelle want to scare you into silence? isn't pretty. Don't question it. <laughs> Mr. LaBelle was trying to protect that little maid gal. 
It was an encounter that rumor. The one about her being possessed. That rumor again. Petty for sure. <laughs> for sure. I guess we really do have to talk about talk to Mayor Tenma about the possession rumor. Hey, watch it! God damn it! Let me take this back now. <laughs> kind of like family to me. Could have just asked instead of stealing it. Was that all we wanted to ask, Mr. Filch? Yeah, I think that was it. Let's go see Mr. Tenmataro one more time. Just thinking about dealing with that yokai again makes me want to say pass. Oh, Tenma, your attorneys are here to see you, your malevolence. Um, why are you speaking like that? Oh, Mayor Tenma, you returned. Yes, well, Jinxie came by earlier to apply a new charm to my head. It seems to be suppressing the demon within me. That's a relief. Maybe we'll actually get somewhere this time. I can't tell if it's it's an act or not. <laughs> so what can I do for you today? Would you like to ask about the rumor that Jinxie is possessed? Huh. She allegedly left the yokai evidence at the scene while under a demon's power. At least that's what the prosecution is going to claim at tomorrow's trial. <laughs> huh? Fuck's sake. Ah, ca, ca, ca. Ah, no match is this warding charm for me. Ah, the, the, the charm! Tenmotaro is back! Those foolish mortals, they shall regret blaming that child for my doings. Ah, I blew it, that question brought that yokai back. And you probably won't drop the act until Jinxie's name is cleared either. We'd like to ask you about something your aide, Floran Bell mentioned. Did you know Jinxie is rumored to be possessed? I know not of what you speak. You're not trying to protect Jinxie, are you? I, Tenma Taro, Demon Lord of the Yokai, protect a mere mortal. No affections do I possess for your race of humans. Please, we already proved there was a third party disguised as a yokai at the, at the scene. It is. It looks like he's, like, fondling something, and I'm like, Sir, what are you? What are you fondling? <laughs> but if you deny that tomorrow, we'll never be able to clear Mayor Tenma's name. But I have already told you, I know not of what you speak. I don't think we'll get anything more out of him. It's all over unless we can somehow prove that Jinxie didn't plant that yokai evidence. Hey, Apollo. I think I got this one. I think I can prove that she didn't do it. Really? Sure. I should be able to use psychology to explain the whole that whole possession thing. Knock yourself out, then. Oh, Athena's really something. I can really count on her when it counts. Mayor Tenma, Jinxie isn't possessed. I believe her so-called possession episodes are a form of somnambulism. Somnambulism? You mean sleepwalking? A I am surprised that Apollo even knows that word. By the way, is the audio okay? I'm asking because I moved my mic a little bit further away, so I don't know if like it's too low now or what. It's very important that you all keep on top of that because I can't do that all the time. It is okay, or it's too low? Yes, I believe she is exhibiting a rare form of the disorder. It's usually brought on by repressed stress. It's okay, okay. Mr. Mayor, didn't her symptoms start soon after she began her job in Ninetales Vale? 
Hmm, when the child visited last. She did speak of dreading y yokai and how they rob her of sleep each night. I knew it. Her lack of sleep is causing her to enter an unconscious state. And that means she can't be trying to protect you. At least not on a conscious level. So then the Tenma Toro that was spotted at the manor was Jinxie. Sleepwalking, huh? Hmm. I would indeed, indeed, indeed explain the matter. Look! Tenmatoro's spirit! It's left the mayor's body! Can you tell us the truth now, Mayor Tenma? Very well. It's the least I could do for a superb exorcist such as you. Mayor Tenma, you didn't leave those feathers and tracks at the scene, did you? I did not. Neither I nor Jinxie have anything to do with that. It was the killer's doing, no doubt. I knew it! Your suspected Oran is behind all this. But why? Did he really want Ninetales Veil that badly? Can you think of any reason why? Hmm. Looking back, he did seem fixated on Tenmataro for a spell. Ah! Could it be? Perhaps he was attempting to release Tenmataro. That's crazy! Are you saying that Yokai is real? Whatever the case, Tenmataro brings nothing but pain and misfortune. I once, uh, I think I forced myself to, like, speak in my, my sleep. I was kind of, like, mumbling until I fell asleep, and then I said the, the glorious phrase of the pig says moo. <laughs> I don't know how that even... Not makes any sense, but how I even got to that point. <laughs> Whatever. Whatever the case, Tamatoto brings nothing but pain and misfortune. It's as a superstition's mourn. You must not gaze upon him, nor free him from his prison. But... How can people actually believe that? Well, at least we know who's behind this whole Tamatoto thing now. As a new motto after Hakuna Matata, the pig says moo. <laughs> yeah, and I think we need to have another nice long chat with Mr. LaBelle. Oh no. Your d d dinner is ready, your malevolence. Ah, oh, an offering to the Demon King. You may place it right there. It was an act. Okay, sweet. The kitchen crew poured their heart and soul into making it. Did they now? Souls happen to be a favorite of mine. Just hold the hearts next time. <laughs> yes, your malevolence. I'll remember that. How long is he planning to keep up this yokai charade? Well, we've already talked to Mr. Filch and Mayor Tenma, so why don't we go see Florian Labelle next? Now that we know the truth, we won't be able to claim that the Tenma Tata was Jinxie or the mayor anymore. Fuck up. <laughs> That's amazing. But the real question is, how are we going to get him to admit it was him? Okay, now let's practice that again, Filchy. From the top, make it drop. <laughs> Um, Mr. LaBelle was in the foyer at the time of the crime. 
And when we, uh, heard a scream, uh, oh heck, what was the next part again? Ah! You have the memory capacity of a flea. This is the 30th time, you know. Now, a hundred times more and we're done. What on earth are they practicing? Aw, oh, I ain't cut out for this. Oopsie daisy. Oh! Oh, begging your pardon, Mr. LaBelle, sir. It's just all this practice. Yikes! Unbelievable. What if you had sullied my outfit with those grubby paws of yours? Filch, Filch, LaBelle's wallet just now? So, what do you think they're up to this time, Apollo? Hmm? Oh, it's you two. Eavesdropping, are we? Pff, you peasants are so tacky. Well, what do you want with me? Your confession to being the Tenmataro imposter would be nice right about now. Mr. Filch filled me in on a conversation you two had, and about how you told him not to say a word about seeing Tenmataro. Filchy, you fool! I told you nothing good would come of you running your mouth! So, why did you want to help Mr. Filch quiet... keep Mr. Filch quiet like that, Mr. LaBelle? <laughs> Oh, why to protect darling little Jinxie, of course. But Jinxie was never really possessed. She was sleepwalking. Being asleep at the time, she couldn't have been consciously trying to protect the mayor. It also means she couldn't have possibly been Tenmatado. Interesting. But where are you going with this? Since you asked so politely, I believe you have a different reason for trying to keep Mr. Filch quiet reason would be to deflect doubt away from the one who was really Tenmataro. <laughs> now this is getting interesting. Are you insinuating that I am Tenmataro? Though sorry to disappoint, but I'm nothing of the sort. That's right, Mr. LaBelle even told me Tenmataro was a jinx and- oh. So why would he argue? Oh, okay. I said Ted Matata was jinxy, you fool. Honestly, you have the memory capacity of a flea. Practice it a hundred times more times. Yikes. So, um, have you been called to testify tomorrow? Yes, and I'm so looking forward to my courtroom debut. But you'll just have to wait until then. <laughs> well, I'll be waiting. A special piece of evidence I've been saving just for you. Filchy, wake up, you lazy bones! Huh? What? Was I sleeping? Ugh. It must have been that sweet cologne of yours, Mr. LaBelle. Made me right sleepy, it did. Well, it's time for your lesson on what to do to do and say tomorrow. Well, I'm begging you. Another lesson. I ain't cut out for this thinking and remembering stuff. Ugh. Right out the... Schnozola? <laughs> Keep quiet and do exactly as I say. No, oh, please. Anything but another lesson. There they go. Missed our chance to get the truth out of him. Yeah. We'll get the proof we need in court tomorrow, one way or another. All that's left now is that lie Jinxie told. We better go clear that up before tomorrow. You think they're done questioning Jinxie? Maybe. Let's see if she's over on Yokai Lane shopping for more charms. Huh. <sighs> Cursed nine tailed fox, the time for settling the score is nigh. My grudge has been but has been festered over time. At last, vengeance will be mine. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. She must be possessed! Uh, sleepwalking again! Maybe if I speak softly, I won't startle her and get a, get a charm plastered on my forehead. Psst! Jinxie? Huh? Oh! Hello, Mr. Demon Lawyer! What did you realize how to do on, on Discord? Oh, 
Oh my charms must have fallen off again. Oh, so I can avoid a charm slap by toning down my cords of steel. Are they done questioning you, Jinxie? Uh huh. And on the way back, I stopped here to buy a new charm that was just released. Yeah, which one? Oh, um, the one with the nine tailed fox and ten motado. It shows them dancing together. Really? Two bitter rivals dancing together. Uh huh. It's a charm for rebuilding burnt bridges. Oh, okay, when you strike out text. Alright, for the municipal merger issue. Oh, it's for the demon lawyer and the insomniac prosecutor. It'll stop you two from fighting like you did in court this morning. Uh, the strike through... Is that the tilde? You can also do spoilers. Somehow. Just search up uh, Discord formatting, text formatting. We weren't fighting, it was just a spirited debate. I'm so the lawyers. Ah! I'm fighting. Ah, charm slapped again. Apollo, if you're done playing around, let's find out what she was lying about. Jinxie. It seems like you're starting to remember things. You already said the feathers and tracks weren't there when you discovered the crime. Have you remembered anything else that seems important? What? Tell us what you saw that day. Maybe you'll remember something else this time. <laughs> when I opened the door, Papa and Alderman QB were collapsed in the fox, fox chamber. That's when Papa told me to call an ambulance and the police. That's all he said before he passed out in the chair. I knew it. She's holding something back. I don't have to wait for it till I start over. Gotcha! You were very nervous when you said that's all he said, weren't you? I know because I saw your fingers move as if you were going to slap someone with the charm. I'm she vibrating though. Huh? Listen to me, Jinxie. This is very important. Did Mayor Tenma say anything else to you? It was. It was nothing. He was just talking in his sleep. Talking in his sleep? So you admit that he did say something else. How could you tell? Only, only a demon could have such powers. Uh, uh, he said... He was just talking in his sleep. I mean, why else would Papa say something like that? Could you be a little more specific? Before he fainted, he said, Forgive me, Jinxie. I killed Alderman QB. He said what? The mayor actually confessed to the crime? But he didn't mean it. He couldn't possibly have known what he was saying. He was probably possessed, or maybe he was in the middle of a nightmare. A nightmare? No, this is a nightmare. This is one statement I wish I'd never heard. What in the world are we going to do now? Return to the basics. That's right. Always believe in your client, no matter what happens. That is the lawyer's greatest and most trusted weapon. Right. Just believe in my client, even if all I can see ahead is darkness and despair. Jinxie, does Prosecutor Blackwell know about your father's confession? I didn't mention it when he was questioning me. I mean, there is no way Papa's the killer. Why would 
the mayor confess like that? Could he really have been dreaming or simply delirious? Who knows? But I sure feel like I'm in a living nightmare right now. Oh, what are we going to do about tomorrow's trial? The crime scene was locked tight until Jinxie arrived. And our clients even confessed. Not only that, Jinxie has been accused of planting the yokai evidence. Both the mayor and Jinxie are going to prison if we don't do something. I know, I know. Well, let's see here. The lack of a third party in the locked room is a major problem. Jinxie has testified that when she first opened the door, Alderman Kyuubi and Mayor, mayor Tenma were the only people she saw in the fox chamber. Now, the real killer must have been hiding in there as well. Considering the room was locked tight, that's the only logical explanation. Her mystery person must have then fled the fox chamber when it was opened. And that's when Jinxie saw what she thought was Tenmo Taro. But... Papa and the Aldermen were the only people there. I didn't see anyone else. What's going on here? The bell's extremely pale, but he's far from transparent. So just how did he hide himself at the scene of the crime? Whatever it takes in court tomorrow, Apollo. We have to take down that dirty, rotten Ten Matado, Florian Labelle. Right. We'll get him with the legal exorcism, justice style. <laughs> Here come the demons. Court is back in session for the trial of Damien Tenma, and I just had a little voice crack, but just ignore that. Apollo Justice, defense team leader, is ready, Your Honor. Athena Sykes, assistant defender, is ready too, Your Honor. Je suis prêt. Prêt? Screech Davis, that woke you up last night. That's so funny. I'm I'm fluent in in in, in, in French <laughs> apparently. As chipper as ever, I see, and in French no less. And the prosecution is back in chains. Very well then. By the way, I asked Detective Fulbright to provide sturdier shackles today. There will be no more of your funny business this time, Prosecutor Blackwell. Now, your opening statement, if you would. I believe it's standard procedure for the prosecution to handle it. Looks like the judge is really bringing it today. <laughs> I would be terrified. I had to... I had my, my, my text alarm, or my text notification, or whatever the fuck you want to say. So many letters non spoken. Yeah, for real though, for real. Like, I used to have uh, the choo choo sound for my like messages. That's my message sound. Whatever. Hold on, let me just see if I can actually play it or something. This one. But it, it's been scaring me so much lately, so I just had to like switch it to like a way more like soft one. 
Because it literally gives me a fucking heart attack and when I'm feeling really anxious and someone is at my door at 1 p.m. and keeps sending me text messages, that's not good. You have 20 letters in the word you pronounce none of them. Maybe one if you're lucky. <laughs> you probably realized how Blackwell played him. It was one mean game of Simon Says. Yeah, his honor has to fight to defend his honor today. Your boldness. It's plain to see that you've always dreamed of delivering an epic opening statement. I have? Hmm, I don't know if I'd say that. Why, of course you have. I saw it in your eyes the last time you gave the opening statement. That was the look of one who yearns deeply for the thrill of an epic opening statement. For decades now, you have been watching opening statements from your bench. They were the crown jewels of the court. The one thing you could not possess. The crown jewels? Of the court? Now at long last, they are within your grasp. How could you possibly refuse? Oh, ah, uh, so, so you don't mind if I do it then? I'll make a special exception, just this once. Here we go again. Yep, more of Blackwell's mind games. Well, in that case, I think I might go ahead and make the opening statement myself. In yesterday's session, we learned the shocking truth that the victim, Alderman Rex Kewby, was the Amazing Ninetales. We also learned that the Amazing Ninetales was a key figure in the yokai craze and anti-merger pro protests. How so? It was further revealed that upon learning Rex Cube's secret identity, Mayor Damien Tenma murdered him. The fact that the crime took place in a tightly locked room was also brought to light. And the only people in that tightly locked room were the defendant and victim. The defense proposed the existence of a hypothetical third party. But further investigation revealed no proof of a third party who had escaped the room. Ergo. We must conclude that the evidence against the defendant is, well, conclusive. Eh, did I did I say something wrong? That was quite astonishing. You've truly outdone yourself this time. Oh, <laughs> oh one more thing to boast about to my grandchild. Well, this was not an unexpected turn of events. Now then, it seems the prosecution has called a new witness to testify. The inexplicable yokai evidence left at the scene of the crime. Well, does that not demand some sort of... Well, does that not demand some sort of explanation? The feathers and tracks? Weren't those left by the mayor while he was possessed? That was but an act to protect his daughter. Oh! Ah, uh, yes. Of course, I had suspected as much. Wait, did he actually believe the mayor's award-winning performance? pretty it's accurate <laughs> i get it and also isn't like dutch the only language uh, in which uh the g is like not pronounced like as a g it's like a <laughs> So everyone thinks like, uh, you know, the painter, Van Gogh. It's not actually pronounced Van Gogh, it's actually like, Van Gogh. <laughs> How does that make any sense? His daughter was the one who planted the yokai evidence, ergo. Thank you. <laughs> I, I, I tend to be really good at pronunciation for some reason. I don't know why. 
The yokai and the manor was the manor's maid, Jinxie Tenma. Objection. The prosecution's in the prosecution is engaging in mere conjecture. No. <laughs> It's either plus or please. Or plea. I'm a cheat? <laughs> it's plu, uh, plus, uh, plea or please. I bet I'm so wrong. What should we fucking please? <laughs> or play or something, I don't fucking know. Hmm. <laughs> Hmm. Would you care for some witness testimony then? Ow! I am ready to prove that the little scamp is the one behind the Tenmataro farce. Witness testimony? Oh, that he means Filch and that creep Lebel. Okay, I already did some, uh, some guessing, so. What the fuck is this? Plaus. Plaus? Huh? <laughs> no, that's bullshit. It sounds like, um... Like the latter part of the word applause in Norwegian. Applaus. <laughs> I'm betting it means Filch and that creep Labelle. Very well then. Bailiff, would you bring in the first witness? Mr. Filch, you made quite the ha hasty exit yesterday. See that it doesn't happen again today. <laughs> I've been known for my hasty retreat since I was a kid. Bit of a trademark of mine. Indeed, you managed to give a total of five bailiffs to slip. If those amateurs could ever nab me, huh? <laughs> yes. Perhaps we should shackle you by the neck. That would keep you in place. Yipes! No, please! I'm liable to rip my own head off if I start running! Your statement, now. Yes, sir! Mr. Blackhead, sir! At least it didn't say blackface like I did! It may be the, be the hasty retreat, but there is no escaping Prosecutor Blackwell. Yeah, Blackwell doesn't strike me as the give up easy type. This has something to do with Czechoslovakia. Well, it's not called that anymore, but... The thing I can, like, actually see is Czechoslovakia, but it's not called that anymore, right? Yeah, okay, cool. Then, Mr. Filch, your testimony, please. Specifically, the true nature of the yoka you saw in the manor shortly after the crime. And Matara really is that little maid girl. Maid gal. Ain't no doubt about it. I mean, the Tenmotaro I saw was just a little thing about her size. The little runt had a big old staff. I seen it when she came into the foyer. Then she just stole it from the forbidden chamber after stumbling on the crime scene. She was gonna use it to wallop me on account of 
of my fierce reputation. I just know it. So, Ken Mataro was short in statute. Statute? God fucking damn it, why do I have to look up like all. Ugh. <sighs> to the lamps? Statutes, okay. Sweet. <clears throat> And that's because it was Miss Jinxie Tenma all along. You betcha. Besides, all the rest in the manor were way taller than her. Failing height is but an easy thing. But a big ox like the defendant could never pass for short. What if the Tenma Tara impersonator was walking on, her, on their knees? Or no knee walking, as they know myself. Hmm, and then perhaps that yokai really was Miss Tenma after all. Well, monsters are not the tricks, either of the mind or the chi parlor var variety. So you're saying she created an illusion like one of those magical eye things? Precisely. Human senses are easily deceived. Take the fellow in the cell next to me. Each night he cries and screams about some ghost he thinks he sees. But in truth, it was simply the janitor. Oh, oh, Prosecutor Blackwell just gave up the ghost. Literally. The janitor's deathly complexion and no white attire are, no doubt, partially to blame. That and the fact that he constantly mutters about taking reven vengeance for this or that. That actually sounds like a real ghost to me. The defense may now cross-examine the witness. Ow. Back. I didn't even hurt. I don't know why I said ow. <laughs> oh, sweet. I can literally just do. Oh, that's nice. Anyways, the key. Objection! It would seem that Tenma Taro, Taro was, in fact, not this innocent little girl. Huh? How do you figure that? You claim the Tenma Taro you saw had one of those staves from the Forbidden Chamber. Then it would have been impossible for Miss Tenma to get a hold of one. Care to elaborate, Mr. Justice? The mayor swallowed this key shortly after the murder. He wanted to keep the killer out of the Forbidden Chamber. What's this? His key was deep in the mayor's stomach when Miss Tenma discovered the crime scene. So you see, it would have been impossible for her to get into the forbidden chamber. In short, the Tenma Taro seen holding that staff could not have been Jinxie Tenma. <laughs> what? There are the demons. Lovely. Then who does the defense believe was impersonating Tenma Taro? Our Tenma Taro impersonator is none other than Mayor Objection. Tenma's aide. Such accusations beg evidence. Aside from his ghastly appearance, can you prove he is the yokai we seek? <laughs> oh my god. Yes, in fact, I can. Very well. Let's see where the defense is going with this. Mr. Justice, please show us proof as to the true identity of the Tenma Taro impersonator. The hand cream. You found this hand cream in the Forbidden Chamber. We know that whoever was Tenma Taro took one of the staves out, out of there. In short, I believe whoever this hand cream belongs to is the yokai impersonator we're looking for. Ah, but Mr. Justice... How do you propose to identi identify the hand cream's owner? I'm glad you asked, Your Honor. 
The defense requests a fingerprint analysis on this piece of evidence. It might tell us who it belongs to. Interesting. So you expect to find the yokai's prints there. Very well. I hereby call a short recess while we wait for the fingerprint results. No need for that, your baldness. We have the prints of everyone at the manor that day. You call, Prosecutor Blackwill. Could anyone be more whipped? Fulbright, analyze this for prints. You have three minutes. Your wish is my command. Very well then. I guess we'll just wait right here. It would seem the fingerprint analysis is complete. What did the results show? What in the world? They're Florent Labelle's prints, aren't they? This... This is absurd. Um... Prosecutor Blackwell? I'm not going to like this, am I? D don't tell me. They're Tenma Taro's prints. Fingerprint analysis has revealed that the prints belong to... Phineas Filch. Objection! Wait. What? What? And Mr. LaBelle wasn't the one who entered the for forbidden chamber. Objection! Why, you tricksy little tanuki. Explain yourself now. Sure. Them prints are mine. I mean, I did pill for that hand cream from Mr. LaBelle after all. So you're the one who entered the Forbidden Chamber. So what if I did? You got a problem with it? Yeah. You fool of a tanuki. Order! Order! Mr. Justice, care to explain what this could mean? Excellent question. The fact that Mr. Phillips was in the Forbidden Chamber... Chamber, wait a second. Does this mean the Tenma Taro holding that staff was... Phineas Filch? Yikes! Another cat out of the bag! M Mr. Filch is Tenma Taro? You know, I honestly did not see this coming at all. I don't understand. Yeah, me too, Beach. Me too. What does this mean? Mr. Filch is the real killer? The witness will explain himself this instant. I mean, your pardon, Your Honorship, but I was just doing what the Alderman told me. He wanted me to be Ten Matato in the village exorcism ritual. Oh, you mean that event at the Nine Tails Veil vale Festival? So that was you inside the Ten Matato costume. Yep, and after the event, I went to watch that pro wrestling program. He bored me to tears on account of the wrestlers being complete jobbers. He didn't actually watch the entire wrestling match. That's when I looked at, te at the Tenma Taro costume and got a great idea. Nobody can tell it's me while I'm wearing it. Because of those superstitions, no matter what I do, the villagers won't say a word. In other words, you use the superstitions to effectively render yourself invisible. I mean, he literally just does. This, you know, like he just bends forward. Hey, I suppose that's the thing you mean, anyways. Why did you want to enter the forbidden chamber in the first place? Because of the treasure there. I thought that was my big chance to sneak on in and grab it. Treasure. Well, that's the, that's the greatest get rich quick chance in the universe. Grandpappy told me all about it, said there is an amazing treasure in there. He went in there not knowing his grandfather had already pilfered it. Yes, that's one tale that didn't get passed down from grandpappy to grandson. Yeah, you did mention that. You were like, where did his head go? Wait, how exactly did you get into the forbidden chamber? There was a meeting in the fox chamber that day. Plus, the mayor swallowed the only key that could open the forbidden chamber's door. Who couldn't have possibly gotten in? I 
could through the air vent in the foyer. The vents left the, the alderman's picture. It went on in and made a nice little hole. I used that to get the get into the air duct that leads to the forbidden chamber I did. You what? But but how is that even possible? Wait a sec. Remember that air vent in the forbidden chamber? So Mr. Filch found a way to get into that air duct. And that's how he got from the foyer vent to the forbidden chamber vent? Ah, so Ten Matata was nothing more than a cat burglar, or rather, a Tanuki burglar. And we're back to being without anyone to charge for the alderman's murder. Looks like our so-called yokai is nothing more than one big troublemaker. Tell me, Mr. Filch, what did you do after fleeing to the foyer? I got out of that costume right quick, when it just caused trouble at that point. And where is that costume now? Heck if I know, and it ain't my fault if you never find it. The police searched every nook and cranny. No yokai costume was left in that manor. And what if it was tossed outside the manor? Ah! No way! Maybe. Just maybe. The defense seems to have hit upon an idea. Well, go on, Mr. Justice. Okay, here's what I think. Mr. Filch, did you get rid of the costume here? Take that. Did you toss it out the window? Because that would certainly explain why it didn't turn up inside the manor. I toss it out of the window? The costume cost me a pretty penny. So why would I go do something like that? I can think of a few reasons. Any bright ideas, Apollo? Well, assuming the costume really was tossed out from the window, then the next question would be, what happened to it after that? And if I'm right, I might have just the thing to prove what happened to the costume. He needs Filch. I have just the evidence for you. You do? This evidence proves that you got rid of your Tenma Taro costume through the window. Take that! Huh, that's... Tenma Taro flying through the sky? And just how does this prove that Mr. Filch threw his costume out the window? It's quite simple. That's not Tenma Taro in the photo. It's the costume Mr. Filch threw out. Crazy talk, you ain't serious, are ya? There's a steep cliff right outside the foyer window, meaning the manor is pretty high up. The costume flew through the air after it was tossed out. That's when the photo was taken. In other words, the photo of Tenma Taro really was a flight of fancy. What? Yikes. Oh my, so there really never was a yokai. Oh, I can't keep any of them cats bagged. Can I still file a claim for the lost costume? This more than proves the defense's position. Jinxie Tenma had nothing to do with staging the yokai sighting. Care to raise any objections, Prosecutor Blackwell? None whatsoever. I'll deal with that Trixie Tanuki after I've dealt with this case. We... we did it. Good going. Now all we have to do is make Florin LaBelle take the stand. Objection! Sheathing the sword a bit early, are we not? Huh? Nothing has been proven beyond a doubt. Take this tricksy little tanuki, for instance. How do you suppose he was able to exit the Forbidden Chamber? Uh... probably the same way he got in. Through the chamber's air vent. And what of the feathers and tracks of the scene of the crime? We would suggest that the Tanuki exited through the chamber door, not the air vent. Objection! But the forbidden chamber doesn't open from the inside! So what you're saying makes no sense! Right? Hmm. Someone on the outside opened the door for you. Isn't that right? Yep, that's right, Mr. Blackjack. The door suddenly sprung right open. Sprung right open? Who was on the other side? 
didn't get a good look on account of the, the sudden glare. I like how the reflection from my head blinds fellow moviegoers emerging from the dark. Charge, please. That's when I slashed that staff and made my daring escape. And then that little maid gal spotted me as I hightailed it down the hall. It means the forbidden chamber wasn't open until after the crime was discovered. Wait. We still don't know who opened it. Maybe there really was a third person in the cox chamber. Objection! Well, you little tanuki. When the forbidden chamber opened, did you see the accused passed out there? Nope. Only one there was... Only one there was the alderman, and he was dead as a doornail. Hmm. If the accused wasn't there, what do you suppose he was up to? Uh-oh. I don't like where this is going. <laughs> don't tell me. Plainly. The one, the only one who could have opened the forbidden chamber was the accused, Damien Tenma. <laughs> Wait a second! There had to be somebody else besides me or Tenma there. Really? And who might that be? Oh well, that would be. Objection. It seems our feisty little lass has forgotten the most important thing. Evidence. I didn't forget. I was just testing your attention to details. Besides, you can't prove your point without proof of some sort. It's a proven fact. Sorry. Guess I put my foot in my mouth again. No, Athena. We're definitely onto something here. We are? Think about it. If Filch was stuck inside the Forbidden Chamber, one of the alibis we heard would no longer hold any water. The defense would like to call a new witness to the stand. Someone who knew Mr. Filch was stuck in the Forbidden Chamber. And by virtue of knowing this, has an alibi that no longer adds up. Huh. Not that insufferable. Very well. The court will hear what Mr. Justice has to say. Whose alibi no longer adds up? Take that! Midas! That's the defendant's aide, Florent Labelle. Didn't he claim to be in the foyer at the time of the crime? True, but in his alibi, he also claimed Mr. Filch was in the foyer too. However, as we all know now, Mr. Filch was not there with Mr. Labelle at the time. In short, Mr. LaBelle's alibi has disappeared. <laughs> Laron LaBelle's alibi was one big lie. Isn't that right, Mr. Filch? I reckon there ain't no keeping that cat in the bag here, neither. It was all Mr. LaBelle's idea. He told me he'd button his lip about me breaking into the Forbidden Chamber. And in return, he said we'd vouch for each other's alibi. Shame on you, Mr. Filch. Perjury is a serious crime, you know. Oh shucks. Mercy, your honorship. Mercy. Ah. He also asserted that the person who opened the forbidden chamber for Mr. Filch was none other than Florent LaBelle. After all, his alibi has just been proven to be a complete fabrication. I see. We will take a 20 minute recess. After which time, we will see what Mr. LaBelle has to say for himself. Yes. Finally going to drag the slippery snake onto the stand. In the meantime, the prosecution will question Mr. LaBelle about these new allegations. We did it, Apollo! We finally dragged Mr. LaBelle into court! Yeah. Why the long face? I can't help but feel I'm missing something important. Plus, Prosecutor Blackwell's bound to mount a counterattack. You really are a worry wart, aren't you? You'll be fine. That mystery figure who opened the forbidden chamber for Mr. Filch had to have been Flora and LaBelle. I know, but it's not what's bugging me. I wish I could put my finger on it, though. At any rate, 
The big showdown with Mr. LaBelle is up next. So chin up, Apollo. Blah. You said you want a joker? <laughs> back in session. Our next witness is... Yes. I'm acting on behalf of the mayor in this very important matter. It seems the witness is predisposed at the moment. Ha ha ha. Surely you jest. I will hold you to your promise. Remember that. Oh, my deepest apologies. This is Florent Labelle, personal aide to Mayor Tenma, or should I say, the accused. Ouch, I'm like the poor mayor hasn't suffered enough. Well, what business do you have with me? I'm a very busy man, so let's make this as brief as possible. Your baldness. Ah, right. <clears throat> Mr. Filcher's testimony has revealed a hole in your alibi. And for this reason... You are suspected of having some sort of connection with the case at hand. <laughs> to think I'd be associated with this entirely lurid affair. Well, I'm not. So may I go now? I have very important matters to attend to. Objection! I don't think so, Mr. LaBelle. Do you realize what a serious crime you've committed? Witness, you are being accused of perjury. This is your chance to clear the air. Hold on, I got a message on Discord. Oh, no worries. <laughs> Fine. The truth is I faked my alibi for a very good reason. The mayor was obviously the killer, so I created a fake alibi to confuse the matter. I'm streaming now. <laughs> you see, as his personal aide, I felt I had to protect him. Sorry. <laughs> you think this is funny? Without your alibi, you're a suspect too. What were you really doing at the time of the crime? <laughs> Peasant, how dare you accuse me, one of the beautiful people of being- Stop stalling and let the court- And tell the court what you were really doing at the time of the crime! Hold on, wait. Oh, uh, great, it doesn't even show up. Silence. Enough jabbering. Swords have been drawn. The time for talk is past. Swords? What swords? This is a duel to the death. The fate of the accused rests in our hands. Be gone, ye of cowardly heart. Oh no, the battlefield hath no place for ye. No. Again? Oh my. Spare me, please! I love... How it just tanks completely when it shows the, uh... The gallery. But other than that, the speed is, like, perfectly fine. <laughs> so much for sturdier shackles. <laughs> Those chains hindered my vow that heads would roll this day. This gives keeping your head on in, co in court a whole new meaning. Will the witness please deliver the accused death knell? You know of what I speak. <laughs> Most certainly. His goose is already cooked. Time to stick a fork in him. Whatever he has to say can't be good. As I told Prosecutor Blackwell during the recess, I rushed right over to the fox chamber when I heard little Jinxie scream. What? Then, drumroll please. 
I saw Mayor Tenma opening the forbidden chamber doors. But, but... There you have it. The mystery man who opened the chamber door, as witnessed by one Phineas Filch. He was the accused. There was never any third party. Oh, and that's not all. I heard something quite startling there at the scene of the crime. Startling sounds bad. The mayor, who was barely conscious, muttered this. Forgive me, Jinxie. I killed the alderman. That's right. The mayor actually confessed to the murder right then and there. He, he confessed? It's like only this shot. <laughs> Other than that, it's perfectly fine. Order! Order in the court! This is quite conclusive testimony if it stands. Just so. And quite astonishing, I might add. I only learned of this fact during the recess. <laughs> I just love surprises, don't you? That's why I saved the best for last. Consider it a gift from me to you. No way! I don't believe Mr. LaBelle heard the mayor confess. Much. And it, it's just really true? Did Mayor Tenma really confess? It is indeed. During that last recess, I confirmed it with the mayor's daughter. It would seem Mayor Tenma actually did confess. Ah, that testimony is quite favorable to the prosecutions. This is LaBelle. Yes, I called earlier about the party reservations. That's right, and I'll be calling my little shindig Mayor Tenma's Conviction Gala. A splendid time is guaranteed for all, all but the mayor and his defense. <laughs> well, as it seems, our witness is a very busy man. Let's get right to his testimony. Mr. LaBelle, please tell us what you saw when you came upon the scene of the crime. in the hallway hiding in the shadows that's when I heard the confession okay upon learning of her father's crime little Jinxie fled without ever noticing me immediately after that the mayor came to st came to stood up and opened the forbidden chamber as I ran in terror the, the demon emerged from his prison in shock, I fled down the hallway to my right, the one with the phone at the end. I must say, this is a shocking revelation. Quite unexpected. To think the defendant actually confessed then and there to his crime. Perhaps the guilt was too much to bear. No, sorry, that was, that was not him. Perhaps the guilt was too much to bear, so he confided in his daughter. You do realize you should not have withheld such crucial testimony from the court. Ha 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 ha. Once again, sorry. It's just, I feared being accused if you mentioned coming upon that most... Um, if I mentioned coming upon that most unpleasant scene. Many of the mayor's confession have to be brought up by this guy. You better do something before the judge declares the mayor guilty. Hmm. As a death row inmate once told me in years gone by, there is a time to fight and a time to yield, a time to live and a time to die. He's laying it on real thick now. The defense may now cross examine the witness. Ah, Ron LaBelle, you're lying about having witnessed these events from the hallway. <laughs> what on earth do you mean? Yes, care to fill the rest of us in, Mr. Justice? If Mr. LaBelle had really fled down into the hall with a phone in it, he would have crossed path with Miss paths with, paths with Miss Tenma. What's this? After she discovered the crime scene, she immediately went to call the police. And after making her call, she went back to the main hallway. 
Whereupon she encountered the demon yo yokai, or whatever you want to call it. As for me, I call it Phineas Filch in a Tenma Taro costume. The encounter happened right here, where the hallways meet. As for Mr. LaBelle, if he had fled here... Green suit? Yeah, he has a purple suit. <laughs> I was like, are you colorblind or something? Are the lamps doing okay? If he had fled here, feigning escape from the yokai imp imposter. Why, yes, the two would have crossed paths. Right, except Miss Tenma told us that there was no one else in the hall. In short, Miss Tenma did not see you there in the hall because you were never really there. <laughs> my eyes! My beautiful eyes! Ha! <laughs> not such a fabulous scent now, is it? But Mr. Justice, and the witness also stated that he heard the mayor confess. If he was lying about hearing the confession from the hall, then where was he when he heard it? Inside the fox chamber, where else? Hmm, but isn't that within the very crime scene? It is, Your Honor. And that means he's not really a witness. Rather, he's the third party I've been alleging this whole time. What? You think I'm the killer? How dare you? Silence. Foolish pup. A true man knows when he is beaten. A shield of lies comes to naught before a foe with the sword of truth bared. Sure. Prosecutor Blackwell, what are you? I thought we were on the same side. You are mistaken. There are no sides here, save for my cold, steely edge of judgment. I don't know why the text just won't appear now. Whatever. It's not a big deal. You are alone upon this battlefield, with naught but your lies and sickly sweet perfume. Oh, what just happened? That quill's really tearing into him. You heard the mayor's confession from the inside, did you not, you deviant dandy? For the sole location from which you could have seen and heard the mayor and the tanuki. Without either of them noticing you, was right there in the fox chamber. Oh my. So that's how it's going to be. Fine, I'll come clean then. <laughs> Sorry. I just got really confused. I thought that was like a head cannon you had or something, then I remembered it. It's it's the lamp. <laughs> Savir is the name of the land. I'm like, huh? Seriously? You admit to being there in the fox chamber? I do. I did enter the room after the murder. Same. <laughs> but I was afraid of being falsely accused, so I lied about it. I feel terrible lying like that, but it's a verbal cologne I use to protect myself. You'd better explain yourself, Mr. LaBelle. Yes, of course. I was just about to get to that. And the witness is skating on thin ice. I'll remind you that perjury is a very serious crime. Now, let's hear your testimony again, this time without your perfume of lies. As if he need any more needs any more milk. <laughs> He's tall enough. I did enter the fox chamber after the murder, but I didn't enter. Until after Jinxie had heard the confession and left. I heard the mayor groan and hid behind the folding screen there. What I saw there up close, it was absolutely horrifying. So you see, I was there, but merely watching from behind the screen. 
from behind the screen. Why, yes, I believe you wouldn't be spotted if you were there. Just so, you could see everything without being spotted by the victim or that tanuki filch. Suffice to say, he was a he was mere witness to the events rather than an actual third party. This guy's as slippery as an eel. Paolo, you think he's telling the truth? Well, he was in the fox chamber, so at least that much must, that much must be true. The defense may cross-examine our slightly voyeuristic wit witness. Out of all the things you could have said, okay. They really said rated M, didn't they? <laughs> okay, poor statement. Could you describe the crime scene in a bit more detail? And what exactly would you like details about? Well, what I'd like to ask you about is... Could you describe the state of the weapons that have been used at the scene? The spear had been thrust all the way through Alderman QB. Then there was that statue the Alderman used to bludgeon Mayor Tenma. That incredibly inspiring symbol had fallen to the floor. Alright, the statue. Why would you find it inspiring? Why exactly did you find the statue inspiring? <laughs> when I saw that statue, I felt as if the merger had been realized. It was like a celebration of union between town and village, an inspiring symbol of goodwill. A broken statue next to a bloody corpse. Really inspiring. Well, Mr. Justice, do you consider his statement to be of any importance? Is it important? Very important. I believe that to, ex to be extremely... Well, I believe that to be extremely important, I request that it be added to the, to the testimony. And yeah, what's it about? The statue had fallen to the floor. It was a token of goodwill celebrating the municipal merger. Okay. Objection. But it was broken, you beach. Your allies have finally betrayed you, Mr. LaBelle. What possibly could you mean? You said this statue was like a celebration of union between town and village. Isn't that correct? It is indeed. The two yokai are joining hands in good goodwill. But what of it? Okay, that's what I didn't read that part. As if they were celebrating the municipal merger. something the matter? So how did you really know that this statue was meant to be a symbol of goodwill again? What? Justice Donald, explain yourself. And make it quick. This statue was, was meant to symbolize goodwill in its original form, but that was a secret. A secret? Whatever do you mean? What I mean is that it broke when someone used it to strike Mayor Tenma on the head. What's left clearly makes what's left clearly makes it look look like the two are yokai are battling it out. <laughs> like what now? <laughs> the statue's secret and its true form were lost inside that locked room. For Miss Tenma is it's the only living soul who should know what it once looked like. How did they do that? I have questions. I'm not sure I actually want to know the answers to them, but I have questions. <laughs> what the fuck? So, Mr. LaBelle. Where could you have possibly seen the statue in its original form? Pfft, what do you mean, where? The only possible answer is this. You saw the statue in its original form. Right there in the room where the alderman was murdered before he was broken. How dare you? M Mr. Justice, are you accusing the witness with some sort of crime? Yes, yes I am.
horniness is a disease. <laughs> Run the bell. I accuse you of the murder of Alderman Rex Cuby. <laughs> Here come the demons. Murder! Murder! Mr. LaBelle, you've been accused of murder. Do you have anything to say in your defense? <laughs> uh, could you possibly accuse me? So sorry. Listen, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't really know what happened either, but uh, sure. The embodiment of beauty! In what world? You look like... The Joker if he was a booty guru. <laughs> way to go, Apollo. Way to go, Apollo! This is the conclusive evidence we needed! Magnifico! We got you now! We know you killed the alderman. Now admit it. I, I, I. Oh. Silence. Enough of your silly games, Justice Dono. This prancing peacock. Could not possibly be the killer. Objection! What are you talking about? His alibi has already crumbled to dust. And I just proved that he was in the fox chamber when it was still locked tight. Silence. And why could he not have why could he have not seen the statue in its true form before the murder? After all, he was close friends with the alderman. Ergo. Yes, that's right. I clearly remember it now. Alderman QB told me about it. About what the statue actually looked like. I mean, he was a good friend of mine. <laughs> no. No. Oh my god. <laughs> y'all really y'all really said let's make the, the chat really curse today, huh? Huh? <laughs> I know exactly what you mean. I hate that I know exactly what you mean. Oh god. Objection! Yeah, right. He wouldn't show you a secret gift just like that. Silence. Just like that, sorry. Moreover, it has already been proven that he was not present at the scene of the crime. It has? Forgotten, have we? Recall the little scamp statement, if you will. Jinxie Tenma unlocked the fox chamber. <laughs> oh my god. She saw the alderman and the mayor collapse therein, and no one else. Oh. Dang it. Let Apollo say fuck! The fact is, it was you two who made that apparent in yesterday's court session. Thus, Floran LaBelle could not possibly have been in that locked room. Oh boy. I just don't get it. How could Jinxie not have seen LaBelle? The proof is incontrovertible. No room for debate exists. Am I not right, your baldness? 
Hmm. It does seem awfully conclusive. The facts point to the defendant and victim being the only people in that locked room. Moreover, the defendant has already confessed. Oh, the text is back for some reason. Okay. Objection! Silence. You cannot defend the indefensible. Your role in this charade is over, Justice Dunn. Why would I shoo you away? What's up? Your boldness. This trial would last an eternity if we were to keep crossing blades with these simpletons. It's high time you brought down the hammer of justice. A point well made. I believe it's time to declare a verdict. This court finds the defendant Damien Tenma. Seem that my time is at hand. M Mayor Tenma? Counselor, there is a matter to which I must testify. I can recall it now, only for your good graces. Ah, I get it. Counselor? Alright, it must be me. I see, finally remembered what happened before the blow to his head. Bailiff, don't you stand there. Seize him. It's no good. I can't restrain him. Know me and despair. For I am Tenmataro, demon lord of the Yokai. Mr. Justice, do something. Since when am I responsible for court security? Hello, this is our chance. You might get some new information out of him. Your, your Honor, seeing as our client has something new to say, I believe due process demands that we hear him out, even if he is a yokai. Hmm. <laughs> Demonic screeching in the background, I ask. When you put it that way... Still, I believe testimony by a yokai is unprecedented in the legal world. Hmm. Unprecedented in absurdity, more like. Alright then, Mr. Damien Tenma. Or should I say, Mr. Tenma Taro. Your testimony, please. I shall now speak of recollections most real courtesy of my host, Damien Tenma. Heed these words, mortals, or hear them but once you shall. Barely conscious was Damien there amid the, dark, amid the darkness. Suddenly, two yokai, two, two yokai did appear. Why did I suddenly speak Swedish? <laughs> on one side, I, Tenma Taro, ruler of demon kind, and on the other, my mortal enemy, the nine-tailed fox. Um, so is the defendant asserting that the room he was in was very dark at the time? Hmm, strange as it may be, yes indeed. All was in darkness. And the part about Tenma Taro and the Ninetail Fox being there? Yes, that too. Tenma Taro towered overhead and, o and the Ninetail Fox glittered gold. Ah, I call animal abuse, your honor. Hmm. It would seem the defendant's recollections are not to be trusted. Yes, well, truth be told, my host's recollections are still a bit fuzzy. As if half-dreamt that happening lingers in his mind. Apollo, maybe I can help here. Really? Oh, you mean... 
Yeah, I can hear it. The discord in his heart. I sense an unusual emotion in the mayor's memory of the event. Okay, I just hope our findings don't come back to haunt us. Again. Barely conscious was steaming there. Suddenly, two yokai did appear. On one side, I, Tamatado, ruler of demon kind. And on the other, my mortal enemy, the nine tailed fox. Got it! When the nine tailed fox appeared, you not only experienced shock and sadness, but also something like joy as well. Joy? Hmm. Perhaps it was joy at the light coming to my eyes at long last. A long and terrible creaking did pierce the silence. And then there was light. On reflection, it was a door that did produce that infernal racket. A creaking door? Well, you must be talking about the forbidden chamber door. It does make a lot of noise. What's up? Apollos, you mean? Maybe he got like a tiny haircut? I don't know. So this means the forbidden chamber really was opened. What about the sudden light he described? I think I know. He mentioned darkness and Tenmatoro towering overhead. Just trim the tip. Maybe the mayor wasn't really in the fox chamber at the time of the crime. Yeah, they are a bit shorter. Mr. Mayor, did the darkness that you were in happen to be here? Take that! Forbidden chamber? Was it not the fox chamber where the murder did occur? Yes, but it all makes sense if you were in the Forbidden Chamber. That terrible creaking sound was probably the Forbidden Chamber's door opening. And the towering Tenmataro you saw? Most likely the Forbidden Chamber statue. Oh, yes, that would explain it. The darkness and the staff and the demon's grasp. But even if all that's true, then what about the Nine-Tailed Fox? Um, maybe he was seeing things, just like Jinxie and her imaginary yokai. Fantastico, Apollo. It's entirely possible. In a groggy dreamlike state, people can misremember things and events. Misremember, you say? Hmm. Let me think. Huh! I do believe I remember now. That that was not the Ninetale Fox, it was... The Amazing Ninetales. What? The amazing nine tails. At first, this is but a dream, I thought. Uh, now, however, most clearly do I recall it. It was the amazing nine tails who did open the forbidden chamber's door. I'm sorry, I asked. <laughs> the amazing nine tails. That was the victim, Alderman Cubie, right? Yeah. Why would he open the forbidden chamber? Are you trying to keep it sealed? Never mind that! This is completely new information! Let me enter it and run an update. Uh -huh. Amid the darkness, a mighty statue of Tenmatoro loomed overhead. suddenly gets out again. Got it. When the amazing nine tails opened the chamber, banishing the darkness within, you felt joy. But didn't you also feel shock and sadness? Hmm. Yes, in the hazy depths of my mind, I do recollect something of that nature. I believe it was the fiend's cape of red. But when I did behold it, a great wave of sadness did in inexplicably wash over me. Cape of red? 
Paolo, we've reduced the, the noise level. Oh, but there's still a little left. Mayor Tenma, why were you sad when you saw the red cape? Hmm. Why indeed? What could this mean? I guess his memory is still a little spotty. I know, because his latest recollection contradicts the evidence. Yeah, it's one of those contradictions that slaps you right across the face. Hmm. Something this obvious could arise. When someone is trying to force a fuzzy memory into a definitive shape. Apollo! I know what you have to do. You need to present evidence that contradicts the image you see. Oh, so it's basically the same as the usual cross-examination process. Okay, time to review the evidence. Look out, contradictions. Here comes justice. The amazing Nine Tails cape was red. Are you sure about that? Yes. Well, I do believe it was a red cape I saw, but Mayor Tenma, does this cape look red to you? Oh, it certainly does not look red. Not even scarlet or crimson either. Nevertheless. Upon my liberation, something red did fill my as yet hazy field of view. And I thought to myself, Ah, the amazing Ninetales is arrayed in the cape of red. So you mistook that red something for his cape, huh? Apparently so. And remembering, remembering it now brings a great sadness upon me. So the red something probably wasn't the cape after all. Maybe that great sadness he mentioned is what's interfering with his memory. Well, you would have seen the fox chamber behind that the amazing nine tails. What red object could could he have seen there that would have been that shocking? Hmm. No. Could it have been Mr. Mayor? Was the red thing you saw this? Take that! Something red that could produce a deep sadness. Could it be Mr. Tenma that you saw that what you saw was the alderman's blood? Blood? Why, yes, it was blood. Uh. It's all coming back to me now. It wasn't the red cape that I saw. It was lying behind the amazing nine tails, the alderman's bloody body. Ah! His noise level is down to zero. I think he's remembered everything now. Does this mean the amazing nine tails killed Alderman QB? The Alderman was the Amazing Ninetales, so how exactly would that work? Hey, I ask you first! Well, Mr. Justice, you sure know how to make a complicated matter even more complicated. True, but at the time of the crime, our client was in the Forbidden Chamber. Moreover... Silence! Hoy, don't you think this strange? The little scamp has already confirmed her father to be in the Fox Chamber. But she said not about seeing the amazing nine tails. She said not about seeing the amazing nine tails there. Uh, I just had to bring that up, didn't you? Jinxie didn't see Labelle there either. It's so weird. Who really was in that room then? Would a defense care to share any theories with the court? Can you explain the inconsistency between the defendant's testimony and his daughter's? Yes, I can. Apparently. Yes, uh, of course. I can explain it. Because if I don't, we're in serious trouble. Not with more of your bluffs and fairy tales, I trust. Fair warning, Justice Dono. I shall have your head if you fail to explain this. It... What about a good old-fashioned penalty? Well, Mr. Justice, let's see if you have a head worth keeping on your shoulders. 
First of all, Mr. LaBelle was definitely in the Fox Chamber while it was locked. We also know that Mayor Tenma was in the Forbidden Chamber based on his testimony. These two facts are crucial to my explanation. Let us consider the following question. If the facts point to Florent LaBelle and the victim being there at the scene, why did Jinxie Tenma see her father, Mayor... her father, Mayor Tenma, and the victim? I love how you just show up with, like, small little tidbits like that that's not really related to the stream at all. <laughs> hmm, a very good question indeed. And I suppose you have an answer for us. You nerd. Sadly, you would be supposing wrong. Um, you think she could have mistaken the bell for the mayor? If she did, the question is, why did she do that? Well, how about that explanation, Mr. Justice? I believe the time for questions is over. The defense asserts that Florian the Bell was at the scene of the crime. However, Jinxie Tenma has testified that she saw her father collapse there. If she has, in fact, misremembered the event, what could have made her do so? The Bell was disguised as Tenma. The figure Miss Tenma saw was not her father. It was Florent LaBelle, disguised as Damien Tenma. Silence! That is a complete impossibility. Their faces are utterly unlike. How could you explain that away with a mere disguise? Yes. They both do have incredibly distinctive faces. Maybe the disguise completely hid his face. I think Jinxie would have mentioned if, he couldn't see her f if she couldn't see her father's face. And if it was a sort of disguise, wouldn't you have removed it? All right. Your sword is as dull as your mind, Justice Dunno. Shall I show you what a truly sharp blade is capable of? <laughs> I think I'll pass it. Are you okay, Apollo? I'm... I'm... Not fine, am I? Well, now that we have that little fairy tale out of the way... Your baldness. Your verdict, if you will. Mr. Justice, I believe it's time for a verdict if you have no further arguments. Uh... What's even left for me to do? Apollo! Remember what Mr. Wright always says! When you're stuck in a tight spot, turn the case upside down. The case upside down. Hmm. He does say that, doesn't he? But I don't quite see how it applies here. Still, it never hurts to give it a try, I guess. Let's see. Rather than Jinxie didn't remove the disguise, maybe she couldn't remove it. And rather than she didn't tell anyone about the disguise, maybe it was she couldn't talk about it. A wrestler's mask is more precious than his own life. He'd never unmask himself in front of others. But there are matches where wrestlers battle for the right to remove each other's mask. To have your mask torn off is the worst humiliation a wrestler could suffer. That's why their masks are more important to them than life itself. And what about the fact that it was the Amazing Ninetales who opened the door? A mask that can't be removed in front of others. And these facts turn things around. it all backwards uh, Apollo I think I think we might have made a huge mistake your baldness I see no need to further indulge them in their silly little farce the defense is no proof they never did and they never will hmm then it seems I must announce my verdict Objection. I do have proof do you know all right, but this better be good, Mr. Justice. We can solve the remaining riddles by turning all of our assumptions upside down. Why Jinxie Tenma mistook Mr. LaBelle for her father? Why she couldn't remove the costume or tell anyone about it in the first place? These riddles are inextric stric inextricably linked to Mayor Tenma's secret identity. A 
shocking secret identity that will turn the entire premise of this case upside down. This piece of evidence clearly reveals Mayor Tenma's secret identity. No. Uh, what absolute claptrap, puppycock, balderdash. He thought the alderman was the amazing Nine Tails, and the mayor was Tenmotaro. Ten That's why you believe the mayor killed the alderman in his lust for Nine Tails' veil, and it was the basis for the prosecution's entire case against their clients. However, we got the whole thing backwards. Mayor Tenma wasn't Tenmotaro at all. He was the amazing Nine Tails. What, 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 what's this? Ow. You would best explain yourself, Justice Dono. And from where you derived, you such a far-fetched conclusion. Jinxie no doubt knew the true identity of the Amazing Ninetales. She couldn't tell anyone no matter what. That's why she didn't say it was the Amazing Ninetales she saw passed out. Even though, unbeknownst to her, it was re really Florent Labelle in disguise. Silence. The accused and that deceitful dandy are utterly dissimilar in physical build and voice. The little scamp would have seen the difference. Objection. Remember, Mr. Labelle has his very own brand of cosmetics. Why couldn't he fake a different build too? And anyone speaking through a mask would naturally sound different. Silence. <laughs> Why did she not simply pull the mask off? Objection. A masked wrestler's disguise is more precious than life itself. As a huge fan of the Amazing Ninetales, she would never dare unmask him. <laughs> Get wrecked, E-boy. This case of mistaken identity also explains the riddle of the locked room. Then, by all means, Mr. Justice, answer it for us already. First, Mr. LaBelle entered the room where the mayor and alderman were talking. Oh, we're almost done. I suspect he brought with him coffee laced with some sort of sedative. Once the alderman was all cold. That's when Mr. LaBelle killed him. We saw this in the first cutscene in the game. Good night, good night, Alderman. Don't diss his ponytail. He will literally kill you. <laughs> Next, he took the mayor, who he, had, who he had also drugged, into the Forbidden Chamber. And he returned to the Fox Chamber, slipped into some of the mayor's spare clothes. Completed the disguise by donning the amazing Ninetales mask. With his entire charade in place, Mr. LaBelle then let out a scream. The scream that led Jinxie Tenma to the secret wallet. <laughs> huh, so then. The person who said I killed Alderman QB was. Yep. I was for the bell in disguise. The mayor never actually confessed. Silence. Hmm. This is no more than guesswork and speculation. Now stop your jabbering and Objection. No, you twisted samurai. It's time you stop your jabbering and let me finish making my case. Mm -hmm. Once Miss Tenma left the scene. Mr. LaBelle still wearing the mayor's clothes and mask. Open the forbidden chamber. So he could drag the mayor back out into the fox chamber. Oh, so the amazing nine tails the mayor saw was. Right, it was the bell opening the forbidden chamber. The second time Mr. LaBelle opened the door to the forbidden chamber, he happened to catch the thieving Mr. Filch by surprise. Startled, Mr. Filch in his Tin Matado disguise ran as fast as he could away from the room. he did, and left behind him a trail of feathers and tracks. He gave Miss Tenma the scare of her life in the hallway. 
and no one left to witness the events that had occurred. Mr. LaBell then proceeded to drag the sleeping mayor back into the fox chamber. I see. Well, that all certainly does make sense. And after dragging the mayor back into the fox chamber, Mr. LaBelle threw the mask out the window and fled the room. Silence. For this absurd theory to work, it requires that the defendant be the amazing Ninetales. However, he was the one pushing for the municipal, mer mer municipal merger. That such an individual could possibly be that the amazing Ninetales is preposterous. Objection. The mayor was blackmail blackmailed into pursuing the merger. Miss Tenma's life would have been in danger if he had openly voices of opposition. That's why he created a secret identity as the Amazing Ninetales. Ugh. This is madness. No one could possibly hatch such an insane plot. No one except the killer as insane as his plot, and I'd say Florent LaBelle more than qualifies. Foolish mortal, it is at your own peril that you forget who I am. Mayor Tenma, it's okay now. Jinxie will be safe just as soon as Mr. LaBelle is arrested. You are the Amazing Ninetales, aren't you? I... I... Hmm. <laughs> you have quite the active imagination. Mayor Tenma is not the Amazing Ninetales. Objection. What do you mean? Well, has the mayor admitted to it yet? But that's just... And even if he did admit to such nonsense, I would reveal the truth behind Tenma Taro right here and now. What? Why, you... You would dare reveal the secret. <laughs> My good friend, the alderman, told me all about it. But it wouldn't be good to expose the truth, what with the superstitions, now would it? The truth behind Tenma Taro. What are you talking about? I'm so lost. So go ahead. Say it. Say, I am the Amazing Ninetales. I dare you. Objection. Wait. Will somebody please explain what's going on here. Mayor Tenma will do anything to keep the truth behind Tenma Taro a secret. A dark, terrible truth that has been kept secret by the village superstitions. And if the mayor admits to being the Amazing Ninetales, he'll expose, expose the truth. It's literally just a flower. <laughs> right, I won't have him walking free because of some nonsense you made up. Hmm. So what now, Justice Donal? Without the mayor's admission, your theory is as useless as you are in battle. I'll show you who's useless. Apollo! Don't you dare give up now! I know, I know. Your Honor, I believe Mr. LaBelle's statements warrant, warrant a thorough cross-examination. After all, the true identity of the Amazing Ninetales is the cornerstone of this case. Hmm, you do have a point there. Please answer this court, Mr. LaBelle. Is the defendant the Amazing Ninetales or not? <sighs> Flower gang, hee haw. What? The Amazing Ninetales' true identity is not Mayor Tenma. The mayor would never admit to such utter nonsense. But if he did admit to such nonsense, I will expose the truth behind Tenma Taro right here and now. And that would bring ruin upon Ninetales' veil, vale, just as the superstitions say. about out of the pot and into the fire. At this rate, the mayor will be found guilty for sure. Honestly speaking, if Mayor Damien Tenma is not the Amazing Ninetales, I'm afraid I don't see how the defense has much of a case here. <laughs> and let's just leave it at that, shall we? We all know Alderman QB was the Amazing Ninetales. Anyway... I mean, that's how Ninetales Vale made a comeback. The Alderman was so popular. There's gotta be a hole in that testimony somewhere. 
And I don't even know where to start. My ear is in pain. Since we don't have any proof that the mayor is the Amazing Nine Tails, then we'll just have to get him to admit it himself. But if he admits it, the bell is going to e expose the secret behind Tenma Taro. Ah, oh, we are so close. I know it. The defense may cross-examine the witness. Do not gaze upon Tenma Taro. Do not tell others if you see him. Isn't that what the village superstitions say? Exactly! Telling others what Tenma Taro looks, looks like would reveal the truth. That's why the superstitions were written down in the first place. And ruin coming to the village would be free him. Instead of warning not to expose the truth. <laughs> Bingo! And that truth is, Tenma Tata was a great, greed-inspiring fortune. That's what the battle over Ninetales Vale is all about. Tenma Tata was a great fortune. Come to think of it. <laughs> Only that it's the greatest get-rich-quick chance in the universe. Grandpappy told me all about it, so there's an amazing treasure in there. Could Tenma Tata actually be... the villagers that Tenma Taro is a terrifying yokai. This what has scared him away from the forbidden chamber and the treasure within. That's how the treasure has been kept secret all this time. <laughs> well, well, well. It seems our ace attorney here has uncovered the truth that must not be revealed. Your Tenma looks like he wants to keep the truth hidden as much as I do. Tragedy is doomed to repeat itself as long as Tenma Taro exists. That's why the secret must be protected. As long as Tenma Taro exists, huh? Mr. LaBelle, please add that statement to your testimony. Tragedy is due to repeat, as to repeat itself as long as Tenma Taro exists. Objection! Mr. LaBelle, what if Tenma Taro no longer existed? Revealing the truth would no longer be an issue, would it? If Tenma Taro no longer existed... <laughs> what on earth are you talking about? Oh, apparently you haven't heard. Tenma Taro no longer exists. And I guess you didn't get to do a thorough search after the key was taken from you. Because when we searched the Forbidden Chamber, there wasn't any treasure there. Really? Well, maybe you weren't looking in the right place. Sorry, but I have proof that Tenma Taro no longer exists. You look at this figure. What do we have here? It looks like some sort of creature. We found this in the Forbidden Chamber. It's an Azuki Kozo figure. The great thief Asuki Kozo used to leave them at the scene of his crimes. Are you suggesting that... That Tenma Taro has been stolen? Yep, Phineas Filch's grandfather, a master thief, was the culprit. And by that hideous moronic caretaker's grandfather, no less. You... I ain't... No! My beautiful golden Tenma Taro was... The greed inspired by Tenma Taro can no longer bring ruin upon Ninetales Vale. Isn't that right, Mayor Tenma? The root of tragedy would indeed seem to be gone. In fact, I now recall the Alderman revealing the secret to me on the day of our meeting. He must have been speaking of Tenma Taro, for he said to me the gold ingot was gone. The gold ingot? You and me in the treasure that, that is Tenma Taro's true form. Recall, if you will, the scroll in the Forbidden Chamber. Tenma Taro is a yellowish object shown there. A giant gold ingot that my nomadic ancestors bestowed upon Ninetales Vale. In return for that gold, my ancestors, ancestors did receive 
from Ninetales Vale. Land that will become Tenma Town. It drive the villagers mad with greed did that great fortune. Bitter was their greed-filled battle. It was as if they were possessed. My ancestors' gold became as a curse upon their village, a curse of ruin. Thus, it was that the yokai Tenma Taro came to be. So Tenma Taro and the village superstitions were merely fairy tales to scare people away. <laughs> fairy tale or not, Tenma Taro made quite the mess of things. Yes, indeed. But there is no greater monster than a mortal man's lust for gold. Well, you know what they say. The love of money is the root of all evil. My ancestors did bring a terrible thing here to Ninetales Vale. A thing so terrible that... Tenmataro, a monster just as terrible, had to be created to keep it a secret. Yet we have naught but love for the little village to which we owe our very existence. Tenmatown would never seek to take over Ninetales Vale in a merger. Oh my, and that was quite a shocking lesson in history. Mr. Mayor, now that we know Tenma Taro no longer exists, are you ready to admit your secret? You are the Amazing Ninetales, aren't you? No, don't do it. Please, no. Be gone, you demented demon. Ahem, now where was I? The golden Lord of Yokai, the Amazing Ninetales, is indeed me. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just like thinking about how ripped he is under those. <laughs> he doesn't look that ripped. <laughs> that means Jinxie. The man wearing the mayor's clothes who you saw collapse in the fox chamber. Was he wearing the amazing Ninetales mask? Uh-huh. That's what made me think it was Papa. He said he was going to reveal his secret identity to Alderman Kyuubi that day, so... So it really wasn't Papa I saw there, was it? It was Florent's, I Florent's idea from the start. He advised me to reveal my secret identity to the Alderman. Yeesh. Rube Goldberg machines have less, ela less elaborate setups than Lebel's scheme. You may rest easy now, little Jinxie. That monster's depiction. Deception is through. Ka, 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 ka. The true facts behind this case have finally come to light. Mayor Tenma did not kill Alderman Kyuubi. Florent Lebel did. How? There you peasant. Silence. Oh, for fuck's sake. Hm. Justice Dono. You should at least have a real blade in your hands if you desire to cross swords with me. Or have you mistaken this battlefield for a training ground? What's this guy want now? Evidence is like a razor sharp blade that cuts through bone as though it were butter. But you have only blind guesses, a dull blade incapable of cutting even a cake. He has you there, Mr. Justice. After all, evidence is everything in a court of law. But, but, but. They're right. Let's see some evidence. Of course, a perfect being like me wouldn't leave any incriminating evidence behind. <laughs> this is the final battle, just as a samurai would l live and die by the sword. You will live or die by the evidence you hold. My swift blade of judgment awaits. Now present your conclusive evidence, or don't you have any? Oh, crud. Do I have anything conclusive? Of course I do. Evidence? Oh, I have evidence. You do? Of course. It's just the conclusive evidence we need, too. I'm going to finally prove Mayor Tenma innocent. Here comes justice! 
Let's review the facts. The most damning evidence against the mayor was the crime scene itself. The mayor and the victim were the only two people found in the room. Also, we all thought the old man was killed because he was the mating Ninetales. But as we now, as we know now, of course, we were way off. What is this, Edgeworth's logic? The amazing Ninetales is really Mayor Damien Tenma. That's why when his daughter Jinxie saw the amazing Ninetales collapse, collapse at the scene, she mistook him for, for her father. Those are the facts as we have revealed. However, Mr. LaBelle asserts that he did not leave any evidence at the scene of the crime. But he didn't say anything about evidence outside the crime scene. Maybe he isn't as clever as he thinks he is. Does any of the evidence found outside the crime scene provide any clues? Why no? The amazing Ninetales mask was, it was found washed up along the, the river. This is literally the, 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 the logic feature. <laughs> what sort of clue does that mask hold, white hair? And what about the hair left in the mask? Right. That hair is Laurent LaBelle's. Yes. Now that's what I call conclusive evidence. <laughs> the zoom in on his forehead. Oh. Well, Mr. Justice, do you have any conclusive evidence to present to this court? What is this logic? <laughs> Literally, only, only, only now, now we have three parts to it. Ho, 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 ho. Of course I do. Observe this mask, if you will. That mask? How is that conclusive evidence? It's not the mask itself, but the white hair inside it. We originally thought it belonged to Alderman Rex, Rex Cuby. Yes, but the amazing Ninetales, as we now know, is Mayor Tenma, so... The logic is stored in the forehead. That is correct, so the question is, whose hair could this be? And the answer to that is the last person to have worn it before it was discarded. That would be you, Mr. Florent LaBelle. What are you what are you talking about? I never had hideous white hair like that. Silence. It would appear your coupe de grâce failed to hit its mark. This freakish fop is not the white hair type. Because he's busy being one ludicrously garish color or another. Objection! No, Prosecutor Blackwell. It's you who has made a fatal error. What? Remember where this mask was found? Washed up by the side of the river. With that in mind... This last piece of evidence will solve all of the remaining riddles. Take that. Ugh, th that's... Huh? What is that? And this is Mr. LaBelle's own private brand of hair, hair color. He washes out with just water. The court will also recall that the amazing Ninetales' mask washed up alongside, along the side of the village river with the white hair inside it. What's this? Are you saying that preening Peacock's hair color is... That's exactly what I'm saying. Sir LaBelle's hair color is a freaky work of fiction. But thanks to the river flowing through Ninetales' veil, vale, we now have a real-life expose. <laughs> White hair in this mask is conclusive evidence proving you're the real killer. The DNA test is all we need to prove it, and we both know we'll get a match. Well, don't you need like the actual like... Just having the hair isn't enough, like you need like the actual part that's like been inside of like your scalp, right? I don't remember exactly what it's called at this point in time, but that's what you need to extract the DNA, right? You can't just get it from, like, a strand of hair if you don't have that. <laughs> Let him have his moment. <laughs> no, to be fair, this is 2027, 20, 20, so maybe they... The root, that's it. Thank you so much. Follicle, yep. Yeah. 
one or the other. I think that's it. Admit it. We're on the bell. You were the one who killed Alderman Rex QB. You, you, peasant, how dare you! You profane my beauty. I'm going to exterminate you. What the? <laughs> oh my god, what the fuck happened? Oh no. What did he say, actually? I'm going to exterminate you. Like I did the alderman. You profane my beauty like a bug on a rose. Oh no, this is terrifying! Hello? This is LaBelle. What? The project is off? This is LaBelle. The sponsors have pulled out. LaBelle speaking. I'm fired? You mean I'm no longer Mayor Tenma's aide? Hello, this is LaBelle. What? There's a stratospheric damages claim against me. A hundred million dollars. <laughs> I'm finished. Washed up. Stick a fork in me. I'm done. Oh boy. This is preposterous. I, Simon Blackwood, defeated. Order! Order! Order me in the court! Huh. Stick your fork in me. <laughs> well, this is quite the unexpected outcome. I must hand it to you, Mr. Justice. You really turned this case on its head, just like that other lawyer, Phoenix Wright. <laughs> Wait, that was a compliment, right? Prosecutor Blackwell, what have you done with Florent LaBelle? The defaced man has withered like a flower without water. Oh, you should go to bed then. Or something. I'm almost done, though. Like, this chapter is, like, almost over. One of the officers is currently tending to him with a sprinkler. Um, wouldn't that just wash even more of his makeup off? Allow me to explain the actions of the guilty party in detail. The motto, of course, was to steal the gold ingot known as the te as Tenmataro. However, few are allowed into the manor due to its cultural ties to Ninetales Vale. LaBelle set in motion plans to gain access to the manor and the gold within, within via the merger. But the efforts of the amazing Ninetales saw those plans come to a halt. And thus, LaBelle murdered the alderman and attempted to pin the blame on Mayor Tenma. I see, but what I still can't comprehend is why would he go after the gold in the first place? Mr. LaBelle doesn't look like someone who is in need of financial aid. LaBelle hid past well, much like he hid his beauty with, his, with makeup. He's mired in debt. Did he perhaps go to a certain loan shark <laughs> from Tender Lender? You know, a certain uh, Don Tigre? Oh, hello, Backflip Bambi. Yes, animations. They're a bit stiff, especially like the f in the face. But, uh, you'll get used to them. <laughs> Debt due to pouring money into a brand only he could love. Which is why he sought the gold with such veracity. Too bad for him, someone else had gotten to it first anyway. I see. Very well then. I believe it's time I declared a verdict. This court finds the defendant, Damien Tenma. It looks like the, the judge is just, like, staring, like, above everyone else. He's just, like, staring right across the courtroom. <laughs> this court finds the defendant, Damien Tenma. Not guilty. Yes! 
And here come the demons. Lovely. adjourned yeah I put Apollo in casual clothes <laughs> that was some seriously good lawyering Apollo even I didn't see that coming <laughs> just got lucky I guess you banished Ten Matado from Ninetales Vale like you were some kind of exorcist um there's still one thing I don't understand how come Mr. LaBelle didn't kill Mayor Tenma too could have set it up so the mayor murdered the alderman, then died from a counterattack. I would have removed at least one possible fly from the ointment. I was wondering about that too. But I have a hunch LaBelle was biding his time. He was planning on exposing the amazing Ninetales' true identity himself. Huh? But why? Because the mayor was the amazing Ninetales. How LaBelle su succeeded in framing Mayor Tenma for the alderman's murder. The wrestler's popularity would have plummeted once his identity was revealed. Oh, I get it. If the amazing Ninetales was just killed, he'd die a hero, but if he was proved a villain, his fans would abandon him, making the merger that much easier. Right. Then, when the merger was complete and everything cooled down, he'd be able to search the forbidden chamber at his leisure. What an insanely intricate plot! Most excellent job clearing my name. A feat worthy of the Demon Lord's approval. Um, why are you acting like Tenmataro again? Let this be of no concern to you. How could it not concern me? Tenmataro, be gone! Jinxie, seems like ages since I've laid eyes on you. Papa, you're finally back! Yes, it would seem Tenmatado is no match for you. <laughs> I'm not scared of that silly yokai anymore. Took my sister to roleplay. Your father's a free man now, Jinxie. Isn't that great? Thank you for all you've done. Seeing you guys in action, it, it makes me feel like I don't have to be afraid anymore. She smiles. Oh my god, that's cute. Wait, is Jinxie actually smiling? This is all thanks to you two. Too bad the amazing Ninetales will have to retire, though. Aww, how come? Once everyone hears I'm the amazing Ninetales, my fanbase will no die. After all, I'm not the most popular of people. Another reason for my secret identity. I don't see how I could possibly continue. <laughs> I think you misjudged yourself. Take a look outside. Say now that you say now that you mention it. What's all that noise out there? A big crowd gathered outside the courthouse once the news broke. Seems they want to get a glimpse of Mayor Damien Tenma, the man behind the mask. And to root for your return to the wrestling ring. Rooting. For me. But I thought I was nothing more than a malefactor in their eyes. The only one who really matters is Jinxie. Show her how cool you really are. They're fighting in the ring, Papa. Yeah, I was like, is it still a furry if it's a bird? But he is also the amazing Ninetales, who is a fox. Well, a fox hybrid anyways, but... The Ninetales. Okay, it wasn't Ninetales you were talking about. Jinxie. Here, I think you'll be needing this. Thank you. Now, if you would excuse me. Hmm? I don't want to keep my fans waiting.
I sure hope they can settle the problems between Tenmatan and Ninetales Vale. Me too. I'm sure they'll be fine, after all. The blackmailer slash killer is behind bars, and the murder is no longer an issue. Plus, the amazing Ninetales is obviously still a hit, and I suspect Ninetales Vale will be too. I think... Uh, <laughs> and it's all because we believe in our clients, just like you said. Okay, people. Now that we've got that one in the bag, let's go get something to eat. I'm starving. Sounds good. I've been so nervous, I haven't eaten since yesterday. Better keep eating, Apollo. You might have to start looking up at me. Huh? I'm definitely past my growth phase, and you should be about past yours, too. Are you kidding me? I'm just getting started. Ready or not, it's face stuffing time. Keep eating like that, and the only direction you'll grow is sideways. Very funny. I've got a hollow leg. I can eat as much as I want without getting an ounce. <laughs> really? Wow, I can't wait to see this. Calories? Ha! Just let him try to stick on me. Alright, alrighty, you two. Let's get going before the old man closes shop. Eldoon's noodles isn't an all night stand, you know. I'm with Mr. Wright. Let's go. I've been waiting to have a bowl from there ever since Mr. Wright told me about them. Well, what are we waiting for? The noodles are on me today, so I expect some serious eating from you two. Yay! Thanks, boss. I won't let you down. Dina has no idea what she's getting into. Mr. Eldoon's noodles are so hot and salty. Two bowls would kill a man. That was our first case together. And it felt like nothing could bring us down after that. God. The dark age of law seemed so distant, so irrelevant, for a small, cozy office. But little did I know that it had been lurking all along, right there behind us. The first time it made itself known, was during the murder at Themis Legal Academy. Themis? I still don't know how to pronounce that. That case would mark the twilight before the dark, cold night that was to come. Yay! Nice! Turnabout Academy is up next. Lovely. I am gonna take a day off tomorrow. Just because streaming like this daily has kind of ruined me. In all ways. I mean, I'm fine, but like, ugh. <laughs> you just missed it! Oh, no, I'm so sorry. You can always just watch the VOD if you want to. I'm trying to keep the streams a bit shorter now, too. And, um... I'm not gonna stream tomorrow, so you have time to catch up. <laughs> Just, like, need, like, a day off, you know? Try to actually get something done here. So, that's gonna be, like, the thing from now on. Uh, I'm gonna... Spend, like, maybe two streams... Per episode depends on like how long they are yeah I will get some rest and uh, once I'm done with the case I'm gonna take a day off <laughs> and then come back like the day after you know so we'll be back on Friday thank you y'all are very nice I really appreciate all of you you're very sweet <laughs> So yeah, with that, I am gonna end it, start my, uh, maybe I'll do some laundry because I've been meaning to do that for a while. <laughs>
Thank you so much, Backflip Bambi. Oh, thank you for appreciating it, I guess. <laughs> That's also something I, re I really like because I, I sometimes struggle with loneliness and stuff and streaming, it really helps. It's, it's... Yay, it's Attorney Hell. We love it. We love it here. We love it here. Yes. Oh my god. Anyways, yeah. Hope to see you again on Friday. Where I'm gonna start uh, the next one, Turnabout Academy. Was that it? I escaped, I escaped it for like... Four years. And then I started... Replaying it like last year technically at some point or even like the year before that. I don't even know anymore And then I started streaming and I was like well <laughs> Might as well just Stream it start over again and stream it But it's really fun because I don't really remember much of the 3ds games and I haven't even played the uh, crossover game with Professor Layton. So I'm really excited for that. And I managed to get the, the DLC for the 3DS game, so I'm like, yes! It's so dumb because I'm like already excited for like certain parts. Like, and, and like, uh, what the fuck is the name of it? Spirit of Justice. I don't know. I'm just I'm just excited, really. Anyways, thank you so much for your support as always. Just being here and wanting to view my stream. I really appreciate it. And I hope to see you again on Friday. Hi. Hope you have a great day or night or whatever it is, wherever in the world you are. <laughs>